eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to Thursday Night Life Fly Tying, the show where passion for fly fishing meets creativity and camaraderie. It's our sixth season, and we're thrilled to have you with us. Without all of you who purchased Season 6 kits and our fantastic sponsors, we wouldn't be able to keep going. So for this, we want to start with a huge thank you, Morning View Mercantile, Lyle Peterman Real Estate, Craft Bear Nation, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, Shore Fishing, Fish Bond, Fly Fusion, and Friesen Brothers. Born in a humble brewery in 2018, our journey began with a simple idea to bring together like-minded souls for an evening of stories, laughter, and the art of fly tying. Our doors were always open, our hearts always welcoming. When the tides of time brought challenges, we evolved. From a cozy corner in a brewery to screens across the world, Thursday Night Life Fly Tying transformed into a virtual stage, forging the unbreakable TNL fam. Every Thursday, join our hosts, the ever-entertaining Dana and the skilled artisan Tim, as they weave magic with their stories and skills. Dana brings the laughter, and Tim brings the craft. Tonight, as always, we tie two unique patterns, celebrate our wins, and share a toast with our favorite beverage from our friends at Craft Beer Nation. Stay tuned for surprises, fly and go and prizes, and above all, the love that binds the TNL fam. Let's dive into the world of fly tying together. Starting off strong. Every once in a while, we show up here <laughs> and celebrate. So we just celebrate. <laughs> we just celebrate. That's all. Yeah. That's so all we're doing. Uh, trying new things here, and I'm frustrated already because this oh. is like making me get down low. I know it. I feel like I just need bad posture. And I'll yeah. Be oh well. I'll be. I'll sit tall. All right. So, anyways, uh, welcome back. Welcome. Um, Rogaine. I was telling you about it, and look at that stuff, man. That's only one week. <laughs> Imagine what other areas of your body look like. I saw a funny, <laughs> I saw a funny um, meme, real whatever thing that everyone sends everyone. Maybe I just leave it off, Tim, because that flow is season <clears throat> six worthy. It's, I just, it's good. Maybe I just hang out with it. I why not? I know. I think it looks pretty good. It very, does it really? Well, yeah. Like, would you recommend 10 out of 10 that I grow my hair? Like, are we muted? Because we've done so. this before. We've shown up live. <laughs> and uh, nobody could hear us for quite a while. Um, so, yeah, if you're just. I got to move this so uh, you just hang out. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, 
It's a little challenging. Today is just a, a day move. of uh, remembering in the new studio <laughs> now how everything I'll was in the old studio. Sure. Is that better? Ooh, it's a party. That's, Very that's good. It's better there. I feel, like I'm, I, feel like, I feel like I'm ducking to get in the camera, but... You change your camera angle. Uh, now yours is wrong. Oh, guys. Hold still. Nope. No, it's good. Guys, Tim left. I can see it right here. <laughs> All right, Thursday Night Live fly hey, tie-in. We tie flies, <laughs> and we hang out, and we drink some beer. And this year, we're excited to say that all of our beer is brought to you by our friends, Craft Beer Nation. Ooh. Is anybody going to focus for me tonight? Craft Beer Nation brought us all the tasty beverages. And so because of the inability to focus, chance. Dude, Bruce just doesn't want to do it. Nobody, nobody this, wants it to focus. One. There it is. Could it be any more perfect on Miami Vice Season 6 to be drinking Paradise Vice? Um, Pineapple Guava Blonde. Somewhat I like the, the, the way this is, but some you know what? You just got to try it. And like you've seen us on every other episode, nothing seems to stay the same from one show to the next. But see, it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I go over top, over the top, over the top. What I will do is I'll promise you that um, inconsistency is the consistency, um, and that's what we do here. So we're gonna tie some flies tonight. Yep, uh, I got Tim, it. what what flies are we? So we got a couple patterns tonight. We're uh, as kind of every season goes, we want to do it a little bit in progression. So we start off with a couple of easier patterns, and and doesn't mean they're not good flies. It just means they're easier to tie. Um, so, let's see if I get this to focus. We're gonna do the squirmy worm to start. Actually, that's gonna be our second fly tonight. Um, we're gonna start with a real simple chronomid called the snow cone. This guy here. Really simple tie, um, but we wanna get you guys started off on the right foot. So, um, if you guys are thinking about getting your threads ready, we'll just get you to go yeah. ahead and kinda do that. So, um, for your, the first fly, it's going to be a snow cone. I'm just using um, some black UTC 70, so a little bit smaller thread, small fly. It's like a size uh, 14, 16. Um, and then for the squirmy worm, I'm just going to use some pink thread because it kind of matches, and but it doesn't need to be pink. could be black or white, and something a little thicker. I'm using a 140 UTC. Um, and then for the first one, feel free to use a, a olive would be great too, or white. You can color it. So yeah, just the first one's a little thinner. <clears throat> next one's a little thicker thread. Um, so every Thursday we go live seven o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So wherever you are, maybe it's nine o'clock. I think that's the latest that it would be, unless you're one of the few that are overseas. And then it's to those you might be time. noon the next day. <laughs> Not and, sure what it and is. And drinking's weird. So. Having said that, what we would like from you guys, and I was trying to allude to this at the beginning, was the consistency is that we want to say hi to you guys. We want to know uh, where you're from, and if you're choosing to have a beverage, this is actually very good. The Paradise Vice Pineapple it. Guava Blonde. It's like, it's a little thick, a little hazy, but... Um, Ooh, that's nice. That's smooth. That's, it is. is Good that, choice, We got Dave. the same. Yep. Yeah. So, Friends of Craft Beer Nation, recommend, highly recommend. Go visit them. They're Gasoline Alley in Red Deer, Alberta. Uh, yeah, that's creamy. Yeah. So, look, we got lots of comments. We got to get back to saying hi to the most important people. Yeah. And there's a lot of people in the house. I'm trying to scroll. My, Mr. Ritzko, round Mr. of Ritzko. clicks, because yep. you're the first. First one. one to comment, and so that's pretty important around here. <laughs> if you can be the first and the last, we have something for you. Ooh. <coughs> I don't know what it is, but <laughs> we do. That's, it's always a mystery how I'm you get stuff here. around here. I, yeah. Uh, Mike Dean Ray coming from South Berks from Pennsylvania. Mr. Durfee, right? he's back, he's hot, he's ready to go. Uh, spinning up some flies, Mr. Ken Hall, so Nathaniel Ken. Shell. Uh, Jennifer did a trip with Brandon this summer oh, yeah, uh, from Washington, Washington and I uh, can tell you what there's her excitement when she hooked a fish was like 
next level. Oh yeah, like that's the kind of that's the good river energy that <laughs> more people need to transpire need to, to have because that was fantastic. That was. Uh, I'm trying to think who I was out with. Um, I feel like it might have been um, Clint. Oh yeah. Maybe. Working today? Clint, let me know. <laughs> you would remember. So welcome, Jennifer. Uh, oh, we're welcome. so glad to have you here hanging out with us, not just on the river, uh, but for the rest of the winter. Joey. Joey Harshaw, down from Coldale. Welcome, so. Joey. Trevor McPhee. We're stoked to be tying today. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, like, there's a few things here. You notice that we're in a brand new studio. And um, a lot of things took place last year. Like, we just showed up and turned things on. <laughs> and so, um, this year, Tim showed up and turned... Can't say that on here, but... Uh, <laughs> what turned you on? <laughs> what turns you on. <laughs> But what we did do is uh, we called the first pancake because it's like we had to redo everything uh, all over again. Yeah. As much time as you want to like pre-practice all this stuff. Uh, yeah, it just feels so mind if there's some flubs. Um, that's what makes the show real. Just real is people. That. Shelly, Scott, Eric, Mr. Augustin forever. What's up, Eric? Um, maybe this be like this much higher and I'd maybe it'd be lower. Yeah, it's interesting. Why did you switch that out? I just my mind won't shut off, Tim. <sighs> I keep trying things, trying new and things, and, and it's not uh, always good. Yeah. Um, Mr. Pluey, Pluey Boy, Mike, uh, Ken, Cole, Aaron, Ryan, Sean, what's happening? Let us know where you're from, too. If you're new, if you haven't been here, throw up the mic is going to be the vein of your existence well you got like a 200 dollars mic stand and a 40 dollars one and you have a perfectly good 200 dollars one over there too <laughs> conscientious tim trying to see if something i think that lowering your head that way though gives us a better view of your hair so oh yeah and there's no bald spot with rogaine none none <laughs> at all i was telling i was telling chaz about it who is obviously here because that's what Chaz does. He shows up. We'll go over to him. He's on the couch all by himself. He was so excited for <laughs> some uh, have some company on the couch. Yeah. And he thought, well, I can squeeze in and make this a reality. But he just showed up by himself and nobody came up. Nobody wants to hang out for uh, season six, episode one. <sighs> so let us know where you're from. If you haven't, if you're new, let us know. We like to know that because we can talk to you what season a TNL is all about. And yeah. if you watch the intro, I want to know, did anybody <laughs> capture the screenshot, the screenshot of me yeah. and Tim, the coloring edition? Need to know. There's Ken from Australia. Up, buddy? Okay. What time's in Australia, Ken? I asked It's got to be there. Like... Mr. Dickow, the mayor, guys. That's the mayor. Roger Beatty. Johnny. Hey, John. Johnny Honor. He changed his last name. Yeah, what's up? Mr. Honorati. I owe. Mr. Pape Mr. is in the house. And Mr. McKenna from Texas. He's been traveling a lot. I've been following his journeys. Mr. Joe Manchinton. What's up, brother? There he is. Clint there Morganton. Is uh, with abundant snacks, as as he always does. Yeah. Four of us tying tonight. Make sure you all logged in separately. <laughs> so last week, we or two weeks ago, we were uh, ripping on Claude because he wasn't logged in. Apparently, he forgot his password. And they take ah. 36 hours to get you oh, a new man. one. So... Uh, excuse is <laughs> sounds like an excuse. Yeah, uh, uh, Bruce Cole, Whitefish Master. Hey, Bruce. Um, Aaron. Well, we've said that. Um, Travis, what's happening? Struthers Brothers. Uh, Mr. Sather, Sather coming from the northern parts of the Sylvan Lake area, <laughs> and he's sipping on a Cool Snake Lake Kinnebach Pilsner. Oh, he knows he yeah. knows what to do. He knows. He knows. Mr. Tebow, Mr. Ro up, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. What's, what's up? up, guys? What's up? One of our awesome sponsors who have donated a lot of stuff for the giveaways, folks. As always, over giving and over delivering. Uh, and that's not going to go unnoticed tonight because you guys are going to get some stuff from them. And some Ready of our other sponsors like Morning View Mercantile. All right. I'm out of breath. Mr. Scoot. What's up, Scooter? Scooter Tabor. 
Judd Cherry. Oh, senior Novlin. Mr. Novlin, the, the senior. The man, the myth. I saw that uh, saw that young gentleman catch a nice fish on the bow this year, too. Yeah, I think he had some good days out there. Days. He knows a guy. <laughs> he does know a guy. <laughs> the best part about having a guide is a son. <laughs> Free I trips know. on the bow. I think I'm not going to have that. <laughs> <laughs> Have to keep rowing it yourself will, around. It will, it will end it me. <laughs> uh, Jason Bags, Doug Lindsay, Cam Wolnuf. What's up, buddy? Um, Rodrigo, Rusty uh, Pool from Texas. What's up, Rusty? Harry Sanguins from Montana. From yes. Montana. Mr. Stephen Lyle himself. It's no up? longer Jim uh, It's just not as much fun when he uses know, his own name. Because when it hits on you, it's weird. Yeah, it was fine before. I mean, I knew it was him. But yeah. Mr. Sean Cameron like right. representing a looks like a fly fisher bow over outfitters sun shirt in his uh, photo there, Mr. McKenna. Retro. Are you in a different studio? We are. We are. We are. We are. New What's studio. up, Hillbilly? What's up, Andy? Johnny Miller, Mission, Texas. Nice. Oh, uh, my new hair is warm, shifter <laughs> than it was before. <laughs> oh, Mr. Marvin Carl from Calgary. Sean, he wasn't supposed Sean. to be here. He said he had to. Yeah, coach, you coach a woman's ballerina you know, soccer party. I thought it was figure skating. I, I don't know. Whatever he was good at for the women's sports, he <laughs> taught it. <laughs> Can't do you teach, I guess. Eh? <laughs> we still love you, bud. Yeah, Justin oh, Fisher, the rum master. Yeah. Oh, Travis doesn't have his kit until Monday. Oh, bummer. Well, having said that, Tim, what happens if you don't have a kit tonight, or if you want to get a kit? Well, you can still go and get a kit, and we'll ship it to you. But if you don't have one, you can always head over to our website where the material list is, and you can yeah. still follow along. It's a good time to show um, this. Just let me. Yeah, so let me uh, figure this heading out. over to our website, you're going to find so much information about every episode coming up. Um, but if you go to Season 6, go to Thursday Night Live tab, go down to Season 6, um, you'll see the two flies we're tying tonight and all the materials there. So if you don't have your kit quite yet, you can always go grab some stuff from, um, from your materials couple of very simple flies tonight you're probably gonna have some of that stuff available to you um and you can go tie along anyways okay so because we're on the topic of things like that can you hear those dings mm -hmm. turn right off. <laughs> troy tracy it's 10 p.m in new brunswick oh yeah that's, that's right a... they're on like probably it's probably like it's 7 20 here so it's probably like 9 37 over there like it's yeah. not full hours <laughs> 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 just give them the the round off all right here. oh we got extra tim here sometimes that happens folks Can never have enough tim never have <sighs> enough tim always taking me away <laughs> i got a calic from the rogaine i think it's a little zach efroni what do you think you gotta not sure that's what it said on the the can of rogaine <laughs> <laughs> the can the can of Rogaine. Okay, folks, I just went to flyfishingbover.com backslash TNL S6. And this is what's going to happen. So here's kind of how Thursday Night Live works. Oh, what's this, Tim? Oh, why don't you just get yourself a kit? Flyingo card. Oh, and a flyingo card. Ooh. So free bingo. You got to go here to sign up for bingo if you want to win. You got to get a bingo card. It's totally free. Just enter your name and your email, and it will uh, take you to a page where you're going to enter your email again. And that's just to confirm that your email is your email, and it's to double confirm that you're not Sean Allison and putting in 47 <laughs> emails. And then it's going to send it to your inbox or your junk mail. Either or, you're going to get a bingo card. And then what you're going to do, at halftime, we're going to play Fly Fishing Bowl Outfitters Flying Go. And uh, we'll just play bingo. And we got all these prizes. So while I'm explaining more to you, Tim's going to kind of gather the prizes and show you Oh, my neck's getting sore from bending over into this microphone, Tim. I don't know how I'm going to carry on like this. Truly. Well, it's called a commercial break and an adjustment. Uh, I don't think I can. <laughs> I don't think I can do that. And All right. Flyvisionbover.com backslash TNLS 6. There's a little bit about what we do, the problems you might have, and the solutions we have. Uh, if you want, you can click on that button there. Bloop. You see it pop up. You can go get your season six kit. I'll click on that after. But here's what's really important is for tonight, episode 1, January 24, 2014, is the Squirmy Wormy and the Snow Cone. Okay? Very important because a lot of you guys have your own materials, and that's fantastic too. So 
You can go on here and you can grab, you know, every fly for the rest of the year is on oh, here. There it is. And you can pre-do this so that you're not scrambling. Every fly, 26 patterns, is on here. So uh, feel free to go over there, go to your flavor, favorite fly shop or um, your new favorite fly shop, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, and get these materials. Uh, they, I'm not sure if it's ready. They used to have a lot of these linked um, to materials that uh, correlated with the flies we're tying. So that's what you do. What you do afterwards, like tomorrow, if you have a kit and you didn't get a tie with us, you can go over here and you can click on like, uh, point here or there. You can click on the watch the video, learn to tie. And so there's what we call quick ties. So Tim's already done them. It's just a quick video walking you through the fly without me present and all the other stuff. And you're just gonna click on there. It's gonna take you right to the YouTube quick tie and all your stuff is gonna walk you through it. So it's really awesome because uh, a lot of people tie tonight and a lot of people don't tie and then they just come back and do the quick ties. Uh, and then the other thing is here is uh, eventually here for the next couple of days, there's gonna be individual kits, but they're only available after the episode, right? See, so after tonight you could go here um, and purchase the single material kit, which would be just the squirmy worm. Uh, or you can go here and purchase the snow cone. And you get, same thing, you get one tied. And you get materials to tie each of those up to five times. And <clears throat> um, yeah, it's it's fun sample way to do things. And then if you love it, you just take this material list and go to Rocky Mountain Fly Shop and say, like, hook me up with the, the shiznit. <laughs> the shiznit. And you can go spend a lot of money on your material <laughs> and you can go buy some really high end materials. Um, yeah. So, and, but if you want to get the whole season, it's not too late. It shows up. You still have the ability to do all of this. It's on sale right now for two thirty nine dollars Canadian. So American, that's about $180. Uh, yeah. So this is a kit that has already been completed, tied. So these are what you'll end up with. All these flies here. A ton of flies. Yeah. And that comes, all the material comes in here. And um, Chaz, do you have your kit? Yeah, it's right here. Okay, so Tim will kind of show you uh, what it looks like and, and how it's packaged and stuff. And uh, Yeah, okay. So this is what your kit's going to look like when you get it. Season 6 kit. Um, when you open it up, there's actually a poster card in here that looks like he's short at the top normally, but I don't have it in this one. Um, so when you open it up, you're going to get uh, one of these packages here, which is a, a cool little material tin that's basically like static free, just, and it helps you organize. So, so when we'll talk about loss, when you open up your kits, often you might have a bead just take off on its own. We've done our best to package them in a way that they're all separate, which you'll see, but still, it's good. So you got one of those in there. Um, <clears throat> what the meat of our... there but we do have some stuff from morning view mercantile that's in your box as well oh yeah your uh, skittles mind. somehow that got stolen in my box <laughs> yeah he's got them over there <laughs> dan i'll show you here so you got a little package of uh freeze-dried skittles which is never gonna focus on his camera um because it loves me it's my new hair <laughs> it must be you're gonna get these pack of uh freeze-dried freeze-dried skittles <laughs> yeah so then I'll, uh, I'll pull out this kit, this here. So you're going to have 13 episodes. Your package is going to look like this. For instance, this is uh, episode six. I have to block that light, so I'm going to focus on you better. But that's, uh, that'll be episode six. So then when, you, when we come to tie uh, during the show or if you're watching the quick ties, you're literally just going to open that package. And in the back, you're going to see that there's actually um, two separate fly patterns packaged. So in this case, I'm not sure what these two are. Oh, we got a, a damselfly nymph and... Chimera. Chimera. So you're going to have two different packages. Um, and then inside there, you have like your beads and hooks are her packaged separately from the materials and so on and so forth. And you're just going to open that up and you're going to have, <coughs> excuse me, enough materials. So you should get you. So you get one already tied for you. So in case yours all flub somehow, you still get a fly out of it. Um, and then you're going to have enough to roughly do another five. It kind of depends on the ones tonight. I was able to get five out of each six plus the one that uh, we gave you. So you should get about six flies by the time you're done, which is Pretty awesome. There's quite a bit of quite a bit of goods in there, and so we just go through it every week. We go to the next uh, the next episode and the next two flies. Yeah, so uh, there's a value to getting the whole kit. Uh, honestly, it never 
it's never too late because like we said all the quick ties are there uh so yeah you go over to our website they're on sale right now and like i said you just click on that i know somebody just put the website link in the live stream um and then you click on this and uh if you're if you're not sure this is what what you want to to hang out and tie with us and you just kind of want to give it a try um you can go over to our store and you just click on the fly tying kits there because uh we got a bunch of just single fly patterns from see these are all from season four right now uh, but if you want you can order this uh which is super awesome because it's on sale for 89 bucks and you're gonna get 12 patterns and they're all this they're all the same idea right uh you can check it out there's all the patterns are are right in there um so yeah that's kind of your low-hanging fruit to see if you like what's going on and and why this works is because uh we know that when you go out and you want to tie a pattern it can get really expensive just just trying to like get the material to tie it and then you tie it and you're like i don't really like this and you got 150 dollars of material that most likely you might not be using anymore i have a whole like board thing dresser out there <laughs> i know it does stack up yeah so it's just great it's all cut up it's all like you know as, as much as a human can do is like is give you the samples the the quantity enough <coughs> and uh yeah those are options how you tie hang out with us uh, but the show's free all the time bingo's free uh tim's gonna show you those those giveaways right now so that you guys make sure you get over there uh get your bingo cards and uh yeah, yeah. tim i think this is still your camera Ah, oh, there it is Okay, so let's go through a few of the giveaways that we have going out tonight. So this first kind of group of stuff I'm going to show you is coming out of Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Um, so to start it off, we've got this uh, Loon Bench Boss. So this thing is pretty awesome. A great little organizer for uh, your materials, your resins, whatever you might want, hooks, beads. Um, so that can just sit on your desk. And well, if you most fly tying desks like myself is a complete mess. So those things are great. So we got uh, that coming at you. We have uh, also from Rock Mountain Fly Shop, we've got a Loon Whip Finish Tool, which is awesome. Great, uh, great company, great tools. Um, Rock Mountain Fly Shop has uh, got a whole bunch of their own foam now, which is, if you've ever tied with foam, sometimes it's, uh, it's kind of frustrating to work with because sometimes it's hard to get the right colors or get enough of the right stuff. So they packaged up all these foams. So we're gonna give these two away um, to you tonight as well. This is all two mil foam, which is awesome. And then we also have a, uh, a 25... Just a side note about the foam. Like, yeah. it's truly two mils. Um, a lot of people go into a craft shop and get their foam and give it a try. But uh, yeah. it, there's something to be said for real good foam on your flies. They just flow better. And uh, the true two mil foam is cool. You get three of them, and, and it's cheaper than than the other stuff that you would find in the fly shops. I yeah, won't it's throw any names. under three bucks for yeah. that, which would probably be a like lot of five flies. or six. And that, so. like Colin was saying today that they're they're starting to do a lot of uh, um, like strips so for sizes of hooks. So it's like pre-cut up stuff yeah. like that. So that's pretty cool too. Yeah, that's wicked. Um, and then also coming in from Rock Mountain Fly Shop, uh, they have given us a $25 gift card. Yep. So we're going to give that away to you. Oh, careful. No, someone's going <laughs> to <someone's laughs> scan that. So that's coming at you as well. <laughs> and then I'll show you a couple other things. That's the good stuff. So this is coming at you from Friesen Brothers, which you're going to see us get to take part in a little yeah. bit of this. Uh, but this is their Alberta Made Cinnamon Spread. So we got three of those to give away as well. So we're going to do that from Friesen Brothers. Coming at you from Fly Fishing Bull Rail. Oh, brand new, hot off the press. You've hot never seen it before. We didn't ask your input. Uh, the brand new sun shirts. Brand new sun hoodie. With what we call, what kind of camo was that again? I don't know. Oman Storm. Oman Storm. With the most important message on it. Love people catch fish. So that's coming at us, uh, or coming at you from us tonight. Yeah. So uh, the new shirts are out. Guess how you get them? I'm guessing you, you, you just play go to Flyingo. The <laughs> They're not even on <laughs> there. On the website yet. These are exclusive. These are exclusive for now. For now. 
uh, for, for the flying go. So we have different sizes. So when you win, you say, I want this size, and we'll send you that size. And when that size is all gone and you win, then you say, hey, I'm going to go on a diet. <laughs> it's pretty or assistant. if you do win, you're going to want to upsize because that cinnamon spread goes down. <laughs> I am not even in the camera right now. No, you're not. <laughs> all right. So all right. It's, it gets weird. <laughs> it gets weird. Okay. And coming at you from Craft Beer Nation, uh, we're giving away a $25 gift card um, to go and buy some beverages that you might enjoy from them as well. So thank you to them. Um, and then from our other sponsors, Morning View Mercantile, we've got a few little goodies coming from them. So we've got uh, some gingerbread ice cream sandwich, which we enjoyed last week. Super good. That one's coming to you. We got uh, one of their pre-made meals. So this is the freeze-dried chili, which we've also had. It's very, very good. And this is a new one. So I actually just got to try it tonight for the first time. But this not is... Not that one. Not this one? Well, like, yeah, but you didn't eat Oh, I somebody's. didn't eat out of this one. No, they actually gave me my own. I so did. I put it back. <laughs> I put it back. Uh, but this so is... So they're sort of freeze-dried, but now they're... A little... Freeze-dried, <laughs> mouth-applied. Free-licked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but this is old cheddar, cheddar cheese. Which at first I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. But let me tell you, that was actually really good. Reminded me of like a really cheesy Ritz cracker. It was super good. So some awesome uh, giveaways that you have the opportunity to win tonight on Flying Go. Um, so without further ado, we've got a couple things to say what's up with you. And the first one is the baking. Well, friends, that's our, our uh, brothers from another mother's. At Friesen Brothers, and Friesen Brothers is, um, I'm telling, I'm telling you, Tim. Tell me. He hasn't tried this sourdough because I haven't let him. He wanted but, to wait till today. But tonight, I literally brought a toaster down to the studio, and when we're not looking, Chaz is gonna toast us up some sourdough. Sourdough. And uh, it's real loud. It's real loud. <laughs> It's kind of loud. Yeah, that's real loud. So we'll just turn that down so you don't get a headache like I do. Um, but the sourdough is incredible. And I can't wait to tell you more about the sourdough because it's special uh, and how they make it, where it comes from. And the ingredients are just flour, salt, and... Uh, the mother dough. Mother dough. The mother dough of it all. Uh, they also got the cinnamon raisin, which doesn't, these don't last long in our house. We make a trip to Sundry uh, once a week and we go for the like four loaves and we get two of the cinnamon spreads. Yeah. They're gone every week. So it's, it's part of why I wanted to do them in a giveaway is uh, we could send you the bread, but I can't promise it's going to be <laughs> great, especially to John it. Onorati sometimes. Oh, yes. You know, he takes a long time to get stuff. Yeah. Anyways, um... Who's that guy? The Couch Cam. Tonight's special guest. <laughs> He's been muted. We'll even let him turn on his mic. Maybe, sometimes. Oh, hey, hey, what's, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> See, guys, the couch does have room for lots of people. <laughs> It has room for one chas. Maybe maybe one chas have a cam. Um, <laughs> half cam. Uh, you can put one chas five cams on there. If you've seen Cam, he's he's less than Tim. Yeah, which yeah is crazy. Nice. Not less than, just smaller than. Yeah, yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> nice studio, boys. Nice studio. Yeah, yeah lovely. Looking good. So why don't you tell us a little bit about you and who you are and uh, when you're going to be here in the green screen suit again? Uh, I am I allowed back? Yeah, I thought I thought yeah. it was banned. No. Well, yeah, because uh, Tim has taken a, a three-week break. He's going on a family trip to New Zealand. Yeah. That's epic. So, I'm, I'm excited. So, truth be told, <laughs> we've got to find some backup. Oh, my goodness. I can't do it all. <laughs> probably, I probably can't even do it, but I can't do it all. <laughs> so, there's some episodes. I don't remember. I don't remember which ones. There's a few I of them. Chaz Talk, tell a funny story. <laughs> uh, got a funny story... Yeah, I stopped in at uh, Craft Beer Nation. Yeah. And uh, you they did, were. You did, you did. I did. And I picked up some stuff for tonight. Guys were super awesome in there. One dude. One dude Dave. was in there. Dave was in there. Mr. Dave. Dave's the man. That, he was awesome. What, like, what a selection. You want to go and try out different, you know, brands and run the gambit? That's, that's the place to go. I actually thought it was pretty cool. It's way better than a normal liquor store. 
yeah, yeah just the selection of craft yeah. craft stuff there and it's not yeah. just not just craft beer but they carry like basically like craft hard alcohol as well which yeah. oh yeah, yeah. and like some non-alcoholic is. selections yeah there's non-alcoholic yeah. selections as well so yeah. and that's awesome. actually becoming big like the non-alcoholic craft uh yeah world, so. it is cool. i saw it on the news today they were talking about uh about that trend of non-alcoholic beers and wines and and stuff like that so yeah so it's awesome great story yeah no, that's it wasn't <laughs> funny but it was, <laughs> it was a good story though yeah, was, you know on my way up yeah well that's what we appreciate the people of tnl supporting those people who support us so yeah it's awesome. yeah the cool thing is um is like we say it a lot the tnl fam and i don't know where the phrase was coined or when I don't have a moment, but what I do know, um, Colin came by the house today. Claude and Colleen came by the house today, which appears uh, Claude got into his, in, his oh, YouTube, so that's go. good. Uh, watching Dave's videos, it's like it's like everybody's the fam. Like we got Morning View Mercantile selling at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. We've got Dave going down to Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, spending twelve dollars on an. Uh, that's what we're supposed to say he spent. Twelve dollars on a Norvice. Yeah, if Jeff's <laughs> listening, he spent under ten dollars. Under ten hundred. <laughs> ten hundred. Um, nice. Yeah, so it's like it's just this connection, the fam, um, the community, and and you guys. You know, when you come up here, uh, there's room on the couch now for for people who want to hang out. Uh, Colin had talked about doing an open house next week. Um, if you know, like some people weren't feeling well and that's totally understandable. Um, but yeah, just the, the freezing brothers, you just come up here, go fishing, head West. You stop in at freezing brothers. It's the family is what it, it truly is. It really is a fam. Community of good. Yeah. Yeah. Community yeah. of good people, good stuff, like just community of good. Helping each other. It's awesome. And that's what you get to look forward to this season as we gather for the next 13 weeks. And uh, we just hang out. We do, we're going we're gonna to tie. What's the first fly? Sorry, I forgot. Uh, we're going to do the snow cone. The snow cone. So we're going to do that right away. So we are going to tie a fly. Um, it's kind of how the show goes. We gibber gabber a bit. Um, and sometimes it gets off the rails. And we're going to tie a fly. <laughs> and we're going to come back. We're going to do a halftime show, which is usually Flyingo. Uh, we're going to pick a winner. haven't told everybody what happens after you win. <laughs> we'll find out. Um, the wizard, the wizard's not here tonight, and the captain's Ooh. not here. No Whoa. wizard. But they'll be back. They'll be back. We just forgot the outfits. <laughs> <laughs> you mean? What do you mean, outfits? I, yeah. Those other two they're characters? They're fitting out. Yeah. They didn't know this was the first episode, uh, so they said they would be back next week. Christmas I think break. they're still on Christmas break. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. And then, um, yeah, and then we'll do that, and then we'll go tie a second fly, and we'll come back, and then uh, we're going to do what's really... A lot of people's most favorite part is it's called uh, What's Important Now, and it's your wins. So we share at the end of the show what's your wins. Uh, we read our wins. We read your wins. And remember those from last year? We did Ooh. a lot of those. Ooh. It's so good. Okay. Um, I'm just checking to make sure that we're ready to say thank you to the sponsors who make the show happen for... Uh, you guys and us. So we'll be back here. Uh, go take a pee, grab a break. Thread was. Uh, let's start off with the UTC 70 blacker. Black or whatever. Yeah, black or green. Whatever or color you want your yeah. chronomet to be at the base. Uh, and then we'll be right back and we're going to tie some flies and um, we'll go on from there. Make sure you comment if you need anything because that's my job. And if you don't comment, <laughs> I'm out of work. I can run around and get some. In the heart of nature, when hunger strikes and time is of the essence, Morning View Mercantile has the solution. Witness how we redefine convenience. It's not just a meal, it's an experience. In mere moments, a feast emerges. Delight in the flavors of the wilderness. Morning View Mercantile, your partner in adventure, your ally in taste. For every adventure, a memorable meal. Morning View Mercantile, where every bite is an expedition.
good Blurs. folks. It's our wonderful sponsors. That's the beautiful people. Beautiful people. All right, so uh, I'm gonna try a new beer here. It's called Retro Styles Cream Ale from Analog Brewing. It's not gonna focus, but I'm gonna. <laughs> it looks retroy. Retro. It looks like you, it's you know like those beer glasses. Like they say like don't drink and drive. You've been where you drank too much. That's kind of what it looks like. That blurry. Focus. Sort of. Sort of. See it. <laughs> these, these wide angle lenses look funny when you do this. It, your arms Hello. are so long. <laughs> Hello, guys. It's me and Tim here coming to you tonight. Right. We're going to drink some beer. We're going to tie some flies. Thin man. When did you turn man? into a pirate? What if people. <laughs> <laughs> what if, they what never if, have that good look of hair. <laughs> what if. Pe- what if people think I'm reaching into their living room? Oh, man. Hello, I'm coming for you, Dave. 3D oh, episode. Yeah, ooh. All right. Very good. <sighs> I like it. Okay, so okay. careful. We're going to switch cameras. We're going to switch microphones. And things might change. So you guys let us know since uh, our cat is attacking the fly tying gear. That's... Don't switch yet. <laughs> well, Tim's... Uh, I was just having a moment there, and uh, you know what they say when in Rome. So anyways, uh, what we were talking about with Chaz earlier was the fact that uh, he's going to be tying because Tim's going to be gone. So we're going to have a couple guest tires, and the first one um, is going to be Aaron. Mr. Novlan is going to be his premiere to studio time. And then Chaz, you know how he thought he got... Out banned, outlawed, kicked out, never allowed back in. Well, yeah. that is all true, but <laughs> but I may I had to make an exception because like Tim's crashing again, so I'll just we'll just mute his mic until he's back. Um, but the exception to the rule is what? What is this year different than last year, Chaz? Well. This year is a bit different. We're in a new studio. Um, to find we have you. a casting couch, couch cam. Yeah, but what's different in this year? Like the only reason I can let you back, there's something that this year has that last year didn't. You know I'm, what? I'm at a loss for words. I know, and that's fine because Tim's almost got his life back together. <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna. I'll leave it with you guys because if, if technically Chaz was banned so like he's on a year suspension right we put him on a whole year there's something different this year than last year it's a and new that's year. why and that it's a new year obviously but that's what that's the only reason that Chaz can come back all right tim i think i'm back okay well let's try your other mic okay. oh we made it <laughs> that was Interesting. All right, folks, let's tie a fly. So this that is, is that is so not warm. It isn't really warm, is it? This is what we're coming at you with. This is the snow cone. Let's show it up here. Yeah. So snow cone. So this is like a um, a chronomid. Basically, it's just a chronomid. So we most fish this in lakes, um, but it's very close to like midge patterns that you would fish in the river. So you also have you know like zebra midges stuff like that. This is just a little bit different take on the color scheme. Um, sizes could range anywhere from you know 14 down to like 20, 22. They can get really small. We're tying this uh, tonight on about a 14, so it's a little bit bigger, so it's a little easier to see, to kind of grasp the concept of what we're tying. So I want you to go grab your season six, episode one. Go ahead and open it up. You'll see there's two packages in the back and just don't grab the one that's pink, grab the other one. So there's not a ton of material in this fly. It's actually quite simple. Um, we're basically gonna have a hook, a bead, some mylar tinsel, and a chunk of wire, and a bead. That's gonna be about it. So it's a fairly simple tie, but this is kind of how we want to start you off. We're gonna kind of talk through some very simple techniques, like how do we get our our you know our thread going on on the hook, that kind of thing. Because um, for some of you here, it might be your very first time tying, or maybe you've been struggling with that technique for a while so it's good to just give you a little bit of a an easier start next week we have a maybe couple just of, uh 
Maybe, do we have that shore bobbin there? Maybe just want to show them how to suck thread through. The shore bobbin? Or you mean the... Uh, no, like a shore bobbin? one. Um, sure. Oh, yeah, there's one yeah. right here. Sand. Show them how to suck it through. How to, how to get your thread started on a bobbin like that, too. So, uh, kind of a normal-looking bobbin is going to look something like this, right? So, that would be kind of a standard one. The ones that I'm using are designed um, by Norvice for the Norvice system. They're called an auto bobbin. Uh, they're pretty much, in my opinion, the best one out there, but that's that's fine. These ones are good as well, and that's where most people have started on. So when you're starting your, your thread on your bobbin, um, before I ever, what did you do to this thing? Before I ever even <clears throat> put, it, put the thread on the bobbin holder itself, I like to take the end, get it a little bit moist, use your mouth, find the end, the hole inside. Oh, that's not me. <laughs> I don't know where you got that bobbin. Ah. You just kind of start it in the hole, but there are bobbin uh. threaders and things like that, but it's way easier to just literally stick your mouth in the end of it, suck it through. You'll feel the thread come into your mouth, and then go ahead and attach. There, it's your bobbin holder. So that's, when you buy thread, it's often on these little holder, or on these uh, thread bobbins that look like this. And that's literally all you gotta do, is suck it through, and then when you wanna Pull tension, you pull tension, it pulls a uh, thread off of the spool. A um, little bit different than on our Norvice bobbins where when you pull tension, for instance, if I pull tension here, it retracts the thread back in. And that's kind of the beauty of the, the auto bobbin. So it makes your life a little easier. Um, you'll know as you start to tie a little bit more, you'll see why that's such an advantage. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start off by just basically gotta go into all your packaging, open it up, and get uh, dump it in your dish. I like my half a head here. It's very nice. It's a zoomed in <laughs> on your product, Tim. <laughs> on the product. I can give full Tim. <laughs> I can give zoom Tim. Just a little bit of zoom Tim. I can give Tim in the top corner. <laughs> yeah. I can give Tim and Dana in the top corner. Oh, look at you. you got so many options. So I just like to yeah dump that out in your tin. Um, you can kind of separate the materials out so you have them where you can see them best as possible. Um, first thing I'd suggest remember you do, to show everyone SOS. Uh, yes. So SOS, all that means is that we're going to take a quick break for whatever reason you need. So like Ken mentioned there, SOS, all it means is we're going to stop. If you have any questions, um, see the, fl the lights flashing, we'll answer your questions. Maybe you just need a break because you, you know, need to catch up. We take it pretty slow in the show, but I know it still moves um, pretty quick when you're new and you're trying to uh, you know, figure it out. So don't hesitate to just say SOS um, and we'll take a pause and let you catch up or let you you know, pick up your hook off the ground that fell out of your vice or whatever it might be. Okay. Um, so first thing here, you got this clump of wire. It's kind of wrapped up for you. So just go ahead, unfold that because we're going to use that pretty quick once we get started. So you want that available to you. You also got just this uh, long strands of mylar. We're just going to use a piece of that. You can get it actually, a, I had a lot of leftover material um, out of the first kit I tied out of. So just save it if you want to do more of them. Um, then you're hooking your bead. So Beads are, especially on this flyer, a little bit smaller. So we got, you know, a little white bead right here. That's the small hole. There's gonna be a large hole and a small hole on a bead. You wanna take the small hole and you wanna put the hook point into that hole. Okay, so let's start off by doing that. Get that in there and pull that up and over so it's sitting right by the, by the, we call that the hook eye, which you'll see or you'll hear me kind of describe as we go through a lot of teaching in different flies. We use the hook, um, the hook bend, we use the hook eye, we use the bead, all as references of size and um, you know length. So a lot of times we measure things off of things on the fly and one of those is, you know, um, sometimes we're leaving a certain amount of a material in a certain place and we measure it off that. So if I were to measure something off of right here, we call that the hook gap, okay? So that's the gap in the hook. So if I say one hook gap off the back of the fly, you would know it's roughly that distance. Um, <clears throat> this is what we call the hook shank. So this is the shank of the hook, and this is the hook eye. So lots of times we refer to, you know, one hook eye behind or uh, a hook eye's length. And that's just basically taking that as a bit of a reference of size, okay? So when we go to start our thread, so like I said before, I'm using a UTC um, one, sorry, no, 70. So it's a little bit smaller thread, and I'm using that um, in black for this fly. So when I start my thread, <clears throat> I wanna hold on to my tag end I'm gonna lay my thread over my hook shank. And the what we're doing here is we're gonna start to wrap and we're actually wrapping back over that tag end. And that's what's securing the thread on the fly because it's basically created a knot. And that by 
um, taking thread wraps back over my tag end, now you can see that's firm and that's not coming off. So take some wraps back over it and then bring it back to the right behind the bead. Take your scissors, just trim out that tag end because we're not going to be needing that. And uh, you can toss that out. Now the first material that we're going to tie in here is we're going to be tying in the wire. So go ahead and grab that piece of wire. It's this size small and a copper color. Okay, this is a nice rib on this fly. So I'm going to actually come in here and I'm going to tuck it in just behind the back of the bead. And I'm going to do what's called a gathering wrap. So the very first wrap that we do, I kind of come up high over the material and I'm just gathering it against the hook and then I pull tight. Okay, so that's gathered the material that's stuck it to the hook shank. Now I can take a couple more wraps to secure it. Now I want you to take that wire and kind of bend it up towards the top of the hook. Then I'm gonna sit that basically right on top of the hook shank and I'm gonna wrap down. Nice touching wraps, securing that wire as I come back down. Now I do wanna get a decent distance down into that hook bend. Um, these coronamids, they're kind of a, I mean, more or less they're like a mosquito that doesn't bite. But when they're in their larva stage like this, they do often have this nice curve to their body um, and they kind of swim like that. So we want to take advantage of that bend because it makes it look even a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to take that all the way down into that bend and then I'm just going to evenly wrap my way back up. So where I leave my thread and where I put bulk into this um, fly is built by the thread underneath the other materials because that's actually kind of the, the bulky part of the fly. So once I have that in there, I want you to go down and grab a piece of that mylar tinsel, okay? Looks like this. I'm just gonna cut off about a three inch piece. You don't need very much of it for each fly. It's just just once couple. you cut that off, <clears throat> um, Mike said staple trick. Mm. Maybe just kind of show in the tie-in camera like how to get the staples out of your kit. Yeah, for sure. So you'll notice all your packaging is stapled. So this, is the, this would be the fly that you would also get in your kit already tied. So if I take take it like so, you can see this is the top side of the staple. All I want to do is pull down here and it pops out one side of the staple. And then all I'm going to do is reverse that motion, pop it out again, your staple's out. Toss it to the side, repeat the process, and it's the easiest way. Over trying to tear the bags, it's easier just to pop the staple. And your staple's out, get rid of it. You can get into your package a lot easier and get out that other fly. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Mike, let us know if that's what you were asking. Okay. So, like I said, that uh, that mylar is going to be the next material we tie in. Got to find my little piece here. Now, this guy's a little bit slipperier, so we need to be careful when we tie this in. Make sure we really get a good um, initial securing wrap on it, gathering wrap. So, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with uh, the wire. I'm going to kind of tuck it up against the bead. I'm going to come over, do that gathering wrap get it secured to the top of the hook shank. And then I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the wire. I'm just gonna go touching wraps all the way back down the fly. I wanna take those wraps all the way to where I left my wire. So I'm coming back down there. And then again, touching wraps, nice and even, all the way up to right behind the bead. And once I get there, I wanna check that underside, I want to check the top side, make sure that looks nice and even for the underbody, which it looks pretty good. I'm going to add a few more wraps just up here, which we would call the thorax of the fly. It's kind of like where, you know, where they're going to hatch wings out of at some point. So it's a little bulkier there normally, but we'll do a couple more of those wraps once we actually get back up there. So now I'm going to do what I call a half hitch. This is like, uh, we can use it to finish off a fly. We can also use it to press the save button on a fly when we're in the middle of tying it. It's no different than on a computer. You type something, you want to save it, hit the save button, this is what this does. So all I'm doing is a simple overhand knot um, to hold it in place. So I'm gonna put two fingers over it. I'm basically gonna make an X, so I've got a loop in my fingers. And I'm just gonna bring that behind the bead, set it down, hold on to that tag end, and slide it down. Okay, I'll do that one more time. So I come over, I cross, all I'm doing is making a circle. And you can see the X right there. Put it just behind the bead, and slowly let that come down and tighten. Now that's the save button. So now that's that's locked in place. Okay, that's not gonna go anywhere. I can take tension off of it. It's not gonna do anything. Now for myself, I have a bobbin cradle over to my left. So I'm just gonna pull that over and set that down. You could also just leave it hanging here. It's just a little easier if it's out of your way, if it's on a bobbin cradle. So 
The first thing I gotta do now is I need to bring both of those materials back up the fly. So I'm gonna start off with my tinsel. So I wanna do nice touching wraps. It doesn't matter which way you wrap, just choose a direction. Avoid that hook point because you don't wanna break the material. And then all we're gonna do is nice touching wraps, making sure we cover up. You can see the black thread coming through, but we that's fine, but we still wanna have full coverage of the tinsel, the mylar on top of the fly. So I'm just gonna slowly work that forward with those touching wraps. I'm gonna take that all the way up behind the bead. And once I get up here, I'm gonna bring that material vertical, bring my thread back so it's where I can use it. And now this is what we're gonna call, um, oh man, I'm blanking right now. So we have gathering wraps, this is a tie down wrap, okay? So this is where we're gonna secure each material so that it can't come off. So I'm gonna come <clears throat> behind the material once, in front of the material once, behind the material once, in front of the material once, and do, do a couple extra. And that's gonna secure that material. Now that material is not gonna pull out on me <clears throat> once I cut this out. So then I'm just gonna slide my scissors down nice and close and trim that piece of my arrow, okay? Now that half hitch I just showed Welcome you. Welcome to, <laughs> what is going on? Uh, don't worry about it. I uh, just, uh, the tech stream stuff. Oh yeah, right here. Show is a yeah. So this is this is um, Shores distributing it. Yeah, Rocky so it, Mountain Fly Shop has it full. Yeah, so it's actually called uh, Bowers Pike Flash, but it's just mylar. That's what it is. It's you you can use it in a streamer, um, but this is a really actually a great color for doing um, chronomids of any kind. So that's all, always a good option. So this is uh, don't like. I think the thing with fly tying is sometimes we get very stuck on recipes to be exact. Well, I don't have that exact material. Well, just open your eyes, look at the material. What does it look like? Do I have something similar? And a lot of times flash, um, even crystal flash, like you can get away with doing a lot of different things. Um, to like make it work. Uh, things we've used in the past, like yarn for dubbing stuff like. Yeah. Using old options. cassette tape as. Oh yeah. <laughs> as like. As uh, flashbacks. Like, yeah. Or. There's so many different variations, but this is a good one. This is a really good one, which you can get at uh, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. And that's what you're gonna see. It's called, ooh, which way do I go this way? Bowers Pike Flash. Textream. Textream, very good. And we're about to get some of their thread, which I hear great things. Also really good, yeah. All right. Okay, so we're back here again. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did there before. I'm gonna do a little half hitch, my little save button. Uh, so Gunner says you can put a plastic earring back on hook point to keep from catching and cut that's a great mm -hmm. uh, another thing you can do is put uh, an eraser, eraser from uh, a clickable pen smaller yeah. than an hb pen yeah. but yeah use them those from, those like, are great tips guys yeah. uh, honestly keep those coming yeah absolutely and that's sometimes um a lot of frustrating part of tying is breaking thread whether you're pulling too hard or whether you're you're nicking it on that hook too many times and it breaks. Yeah, Cam's it's never like, done that. <laughs> never once has Cam broke. That's why he quit tying. <laughs> okay, so now all we're gonna do is bring Tim, our. How much Rogaine is a man to take? How much did you take? I'm just, I just, break. I sorry, I went out there. I was just doing some more, but Gosh. I'm not feeling great. Anyways, you keep going. Okay, well, you'll all get to see that in a minute. <clears throat> okay, all I gotta do now is bring the wire forward, same way that I. Uh, that I did with the, the flash. So we, you'll see on these vices, and most vices now have some type of rotary function. I could use the rotary function. Um, the reason I don't love using it on a fly like this is simply because the shape of the hook. Um, so you often will catch it on that hook point where I have more control if I just use my hands to work it around um, the hook itself. So when I wrap this forward, different than the other one, those were touching wraps. These ones are gonna be wide and open and it doesn't really matter the distance as much as it matters in consistency. So this is what's gonna um, give what we call segmentation to the body. This actually gives a very realistic look to this bug. So just nice, even spaced. When I get to the bead, I'm gonna come and bring that vertical like I did with the flash. And I'm gonna do a securing wrap just like I did last time. So remember, it's behind and in front, behind and in front. And that will secure that material so it's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, so there's a couple ways. You can do what they call helicoptering off. So I could just do this a bunch of times so that wire gets weak and it breaks off. Or I could grab my Dana scissors, which is just scissors you steal from your friend. And those are also available at Rocky <laughs> Mountain Fly Shop. And Dave Rutherford got himself a pair. 
These are the good ones. So these ones are the ones that I just cut wire with or anything else that I don't care if it's dull. I'm gonna trim that out. And now we're pretty much at the end of the fly. I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I do to these myself, but that aren't necessarily- J um, Just a point of reference, cause sometimes uh, I don't think people quite understand, un unless they're tying, but they don't quite understand the size of what, what you're doing there. It's teensy, like teensy. So it looks really big on the screen, but, and that, to be honest, this is not even small. This is actually a very big version of this fly. So they get a lot smaller, but the good thing about some of these patterns are because they are so simple, you can tie them in small sizes without a ton of problem. So that's a little, very little fly. So now that I'm up here though, I do want to take a few more wraps. I'm going to build up like we talked about that little thorax. So I'm going to leave some black thread, really cover up the end of that wire and leave it about like that. So it looks like a little transition from the body to thorax to the head. Okay. And the reason we use that white cone is a lot of times um, when these bugs are emerging off the bottom of a lake or a river, um, they use air. They like produce an air bubble that allows them to get to the surface. So that's kind of what that's signifying at that point. You've seen that big white bead. So that's why we're using that. Now there's a couple ways to finish this. We could do that, what we talked about, that half hitch, just that little simple overhand knot, do that two or three times, or we can do what's called a whip finish. So we get, we're given one away tonight, a whip finish tool. So it looks like, what is this one? Okay, this is a shorter one, um, but it's kind of a funky looking tool. But what it does is I'm gonna come in on, it's gonna be it's kind of a hard view to show you, but I'm gonna come in and stab my thread with that point. Okay, so I come in and stab it while pulling the thread back towards myself. I'm gonna wrap it around that bottom little groove that's there. And I'm gonna just pull pressure with um, the hand that's holding the bobbin. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna cause it to flip. Okay, it flips. And as soon as you get that, try to bring it down so you can see it, that shape of a four, okay? Once I have that four shape, now I can start wrapping. I can do maybe one, two, three wraps, and then I tip it off the butt end. And then I slowly pull with that hook end till it's up near the top, and I slide it out. And that ties it on. And I normally would do two of them. So again, I stab my thread, I wrap it around the butt end, bobbin hand forward, it's gonna cause that to fold and roll into that four. And then I can just do two to three wraps. And then off the butt end, pull with my bobbin, slides the hook to the top of the hook, I slip the hook out, pull it tight. Now that's a very secure knot, okay? If you're using resin on a fly like this, you don't necessarily need to do a whip finish, a half hitch would do, um, cause you'd be covering up those wraps anyways. Then I'm just gonna trim up my thread, and set that to the side. Now that's perfectly fine to go and fish that right now, okay? Um, personally, what I like to do with a, with a coronamid is you give it a bit of a glazed look and you build the body up a little bit with some resin. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'm using, this is, you can't, there's no manufacturing product tag on this, but this is uh, some UV resin. So I put it on and I actually cure it with a UV light. Um, this one is bone We've got dry. some other stuff over there similar. Yeah, there is another similar Tall, stuff. tall. Oh yeah, like this. So this is, this is a little bit thicker version of the same thing, Solarize. This is, they call it thin hard, but this is, this is actually quite a bit thicker than this one. This is like my favorite one. So if you're, if you're looking for a good resin to get you through the whole season, I'm gonna use this a ton. It's called Bone Dry by Solarize, and I'm pretty sure you can get this at Rock Mountain Fly Shop as well. Um, but I'll show you, it's super thin, and this one comes with like a little brush, and you can see how thin it is. It is very, very thin. It's almost like a nail polish, just like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get my UV right, light ready. So when I turn that on, it just glows. Okay, it's gonna cure that instantly. I kind of have that ready to go. So Mr. Once, Blake Teague supplied those. Yes, he did. So once I get this resin on there, I wanna be able to cure it pretty fast. So all I'm gonna do is taking the slightest amount and I'm gonna put a little coat on there. Mr. Teague's already tied all five in his pack. He He's like my, ro he's, he's very similar to my rogue game. <laughs> very just, efficiently works. Just works. So then I once I get it on, I'm gonna do a little bit of spin if you have the rotary function, because that helps keep it where you put it on. And I just turn my light on. It doesn't want to work at the moment. Grab my other one. You do gotta charge them. 
and I just cure it. You'll, t you'll see it smokes a little bit. That's kind of showing you that that cure process is happening. Give it a good five, 10 seconds. So Colleen good. didn't ask the question, but she wants to ask the question for Claude. How many seconds do you put that in the microwave if you need it to? Well, I did it again today, and although they don't believe me, this stuff will harden. So like, since I haven't tied with this since, since, since last season, it got really thick. So I toss it in the microwave for 30 seconds, but here's the key. You gotta take this off. Take this off, set it aside. Don't put that in the microwave, just this. Even if there's hard crusties on this thing, this is so warm when it comes out of the microwave that when you stick it back in, it'll melt it off the brush and you're good to go again. Gets it right back to thin. So there you go, guys. That is our snow cone chronomid. That is definitely a bug. And like how we would fish this normally is gonna be under an indicator. Um, and I'm not the best chronomid fisher. I don't think any of us or either Aaron of us would, would say that. Mr. Nova is pretty good at it. Um, but this is something depending on the depth of water you're fishing in um, and depending on where the fish are, you gotta play with it a bit. You might be, if you're in 10 feet of water, you might have it like nine or you might have it at five or three. Like it really depends on how the fish are feeding and where these guys are emerging off the bottom. Um, but there's always lots of them and I would say most lakes are gonna have chronomids so it's a pretty safe bet to give a try on. Um, I would say most lake fishermen would say it's a bit of a staple if they're struggling to get them on you know, little streamers or leeches, they're gonna go to a chronomid and that's where they're gonna find success. So these can be tied in lots of variations of colors. Um, the snow cone itself can be tied in a whole various of colors. Sometimes you use a red tinsel, sometimes you use an all black. Um, sometimes you make them look like a, the zebra midges. Um, there's lots of variations you can do with them, but this is the color scheme we're going with today. Yeah. So there she is. <laughs> yeah, like I said, uh, that was some effective uh, Rogaine. Doesn't even look comfortable. I don't know. <laughs> you should switch your mics so I can enjoy your warm, sultry voice again. The sweet sound. Cut me off. There it is. That's better. Anyways, folks, uh, if you were bald like I used to be and you want some Rogaine tips, uh, hit me up because I have a supplier that will make sure that uh, that it goes well. Some of us don't need it. That's a good point. <laughs> How's that uh, Patch Adams cheese stash? Oh, this guy goatee right here. beard oh. doing to him. Well, you know oh, what? I finally God had to shave just this over a here. A few it perfect was... heads and the rest he covered with hair. Uh, that's right. At um, least I was wise enough to shave off the pubes that were growing on this side that's, of the face. That's a good point. Are they are they called pubes? I don't know. Probably not. Because if they're, it's if not, they're not, then hair. why were they growing there? Well, they look like it. Because you have a cock a doodle face <laughs> <laughs> cock a doodle do i saw a thing by jim carrey today it's like steve sent it to me anyways i don't know if i could share it on here do you guys think i can share it there's a couple things i'm looking for i got a bit of a quiz for you about chronomids and i'm also looking forward to your answer because i haven't seen it anywhere about what's different this year oh, than last different? year and that's the only reason I should wash my hair. Like, I didn't know it grew so fast. That's it obviously, it's got oily. <laughs> oh, but I was thinking to myself, Gross. this is kind of like boy band K-pop. my fave. Tunes have been good tonight. I'll, I'll give you oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, started, started sure, strong. sure. <laughs> sure. Anyways, what's up? Under a bobber. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. So... There's a couple ways to fish a chronomid because that's my job on the show is to do that sort of thing. But uh, first of all, from things that Tim said, I have to ask you a question. Which of the following is not a characteristic of a chronomid? Ooh. Okay. Small size. Aquatic insect. Larva build protective cases. Strong swimmers. I know the answer. Which one is not a characteristic of a chronomid? Let's Small size, aquatic insect, larva build protective cases, or strong swimmers? Got any of those? Strong swimmers? 
I actually don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried them so, out. Huh? Somewhere in the world, <laughs> there may have I, got one or there two may through. have been. Uh, they don't, can't all get screened out. <laughs> they, they can't. See, look, uh, uh, Dave is commenting on my go. nice, my nice Chris yeah. fade. His wife Tiffany is my barber. So Mike says yeah. I look like so. Yeah, that's true. Uh, shout out to Red Stag. Is that what they're called? Yeah, Red Stag Barbershop, Gas yeah, so Alley, about two doors down from the. You could go get your hair cut. You can get some freeze dried goods at Morning View Mercantile, and then you could pop over, and you could actually probably have a beer from Craft Beer Nation as you're you getting know your what? haircut. There's actually and a menu, and you can. It's amazing. Oh, what it feels like to have hair, guys. <laughs> Uh, I, I should say that Tiff did say maybe you should come in for a mustache trimming because she's not sure about the curtain Jealous. look. Jealous. <laughs> it's okay. Jealous. Sorry, maybe Tiff, I tried. Wants, maybe she maybe she <laughs> wants me to stop doing the Rogaine because it's getting out of control. I don't even know what she'd do with that. Uh, Strong Swimmers is right. Okay, so, uh, next question about chronomids. What is the primary habitat of chronomid larvae? Fast flowing rivers? Sandy riverbeds, rocky stream bottoms, or still water environments. Ooh. Who's going two for two? Two for two. We got a lot of people that got the first one right. Yeah, there was. Not Mike. Now we know. Not Mike Ploy. Sorry, bud. (laughs) Trying to find my mouse. Where is it at? That's the wrong computer. There it is. What do we got? What's the environment? Still water. Still water. Oh, Mike went for the still second water. one. Still water. Still water. Still water. Still yes. um, water. Yeah, because chronomids are actually a non-biting mosquito. Yeah. So, uh, you know, mosquitoes, they're living cesspooly type still waters. Yeah. I'm going to have to go get a haircut between the next flies. Oh, we got bingo. We do got bingo. I don't know how to play bingo anymore. <laughs> Stick with us. <laughs> All right, third question. Last one about chronomids. What stage of a chronomids life cycle is most commonly imitated in fly patterns? Ooh. The egg, the larva, the pupa, or the adult? Good questions. Good quiz. Well, this is my buddy Dan Alstrom on the boat this summer said the show could be better if we did a little more education. So, well, we listen. I'm so far one for one. One, for one, one. fly, one, one education. <laughs> one education. I can't wait for ha- talking about the hatching on the next fly. Yes. If you guys get a chance, not right now because we don't want you to leave. Um, uh, uh, season one it's all, it's all on our YouTube channel If you're not subscribing to our YouTube channel uh, I highly recommend it And the other th- It's just having bangs Bang life <laughs> um, Season one Okay There's like a Christmas episode I don't know if it's episode four or five or whatever But you'll see it says Christmas episode Watch that because it was it was one it's it's the greatest thing I missed from going to the brewery yeah. is the Christmas one where we just had a random package of materials that people would tie from and garnet clues. Oh man. The Beetle Emerger. The Beetle Emerger. Uh, before I was allowed on the show, that was kind of my debut. I, I had an extra mic and I somewhere was in the background trying to chirp people. Um that was something else. That was special. Actually. Super okay. special. Larva, pupa, 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 larva, larva, pupa. Wow, we've got some uh, devil. Yeah. We've got some questions, and we don't have a unanimous vote for that. No but unanimous. the correct answer is pupa. Pupa. So pupa. what's the difference pupa. between pupa and larva? Well, Tim, that's next week. <laughs> After you read Google. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think the pupa is the next stage out of a larva. Ah, okay. Which makes them not a strong swimmer because they're They're, emerging. They're vulnerable. Yeah. 
Yeah, egg, egg. egg, larva, pupa, adult. Kind of in that phase. And then these chronomids are going as the pupa, so they're just suspended. So in a lake, if you want to have success, you got to know at what level the fish are hitting those chronomids. You could be nine foot deep. Some people, uh, I'm not a lake fisherman. I can't speak enough about it. Uh, but it's like one foot off the bottom. So they'll throw their gear to the bottom and they pull up 12 inches. That's why they have all those like measuring. Like it's very, yeah, it's specific. very specific. And those slip bobber <coughs> things. And- yeah. So what I do know is a place that I like to go fish. It's typically four feet under an indicator. Mm-hmm. An airlock indicator. Oros. Let's talk Oros. Ooh, I like Oros. I don't like Oros. I know. I don't know why. Way too many of those come undone and spin off. I wonder what it is because I've, in all, like, basically two years of using them, I've had it happen one time only. Man, so many times. So you build I the think big because butt I'm at the half top? blind no, but is I'm not actually going through the thing. Well, that would definitely mean that they would come off. Now we know. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to play bingo. So everybody's got their bingo card. Go to flyfishingbover.com backslash TNLS6. And um, we're going to we're Ooh. gonna fire up some of these right after bingo. We're going to toast them. Mm. Get some cinnamon spread on those. Freezing Brothers. The cinnamon. Big King Can. Both. No, it's just the, they're both sourdough. But just going to go for the straight sourdough. And Chaz was asking a question. We might as well bring him in here. Yo. Look, he's looking very flushed. Yeah, he's finally picked up his kit. Yeah. He's sitting there jonesing. <laughs> Can't um, wait. Can't wait. Okay, so we're going to say thanks to our sponsors, and we're going to come back. We're going to play bingo. Flyfishingbover.com backslash TNLS6. Get your bingo cards because we're going to play, and all of this stuff is going to be may be given away in the heart of nature when hunger strikes and time is of the essence morning view mercantile has the solution witness how we redefine convenience it's not just a meal it's an experience in mere moments a feast emerges delight in the flavors of the wilderness morning view mercantile your partner in adventure your ally in taste. For every adventure, a memorable meal. Morning View Mercantile, where every bite is an expedition.
good. I was uh, I was feeling bad because um, I thought maybe people actually think Rogaine works. <laughs> it doesn't. Well, it does. Um, hey, I just wanted to throw this out there that if anybody is feeling like, oh, yeah, I gotta find the bingo game. So we're gonna play bingo. Bingo. Oh wow, we're bingo. 150 cards already. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's 150 cards out there for bingo And uh, that would make sense Because there's about equal amount of viewers here So it looks like everybody's here for bingo um, But what oh. we need you Oh yeah, oh, trying a man. new drink That one is Okay, I'll go, I'll I, go. I got Farmer's a... Tan from um, Craft Beer Nation A Belgian white, proudly brewed in Alberta And I got a uh, Hefeweizen from oh, yeah. Evil Twin Brewing in New York City. This oh, guy New York City. So our friends like John could actually go get one of those. Send us a picture, John, when you do. Yeah. I got to say, this one is... Um, I really like that creamy pineapple one, but just take a little... Uh, a little, a little Guys, spin. just so you know, when we actually tie flies that require more time, we'll get to it. Um, <laughs> This one is um, very smooth, very, very light. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, that's, that might be a new favorite for me. Very nice. This is the nice part about partnering with Craft Beer Nation is we're not Friday. stuck with one one beer. We get yeah. to try, try all. all sorts of stuff and give recommendations. Super cool store, man. Yeah. Walk in. Big bearded Dave. Yeah, choose your own adventure in there, dude. Trimmed mustache, no curtains. Yep, that's I'm, unfortunate. I'm actually <laughs> jealous of the curtain, so... How do you eat, though? Like, how do you... You, you, watch, you watch the movie well, like Well, Tim, check it out. Obviously fine. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> next question. How do you engage in extracurricular activities? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Where, where's J9? Oh, uh, J9? Have you ever seen a street sweeper? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you're adding moisture there's as well? No, <laughs> <laughs> there's no rocks left on the street when that thing's done. Well, folks, here's your street sweeper. There's, there's a big broom in the front. Uh, and, uh, and a Swiffer in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is 435? I don't know. The sourdough made me hungry, so I threw some dough in the oven. There you go. Well, Jeremy, Eric says 435, come hell or high water. Oh, man. Nice. And we're going to play bingo. Bingo time. So, get my card. Yes. Guys, if Chaz wins, it's not our fault. There's no cheat codes. You just yeah. got to play. Where's the bingo? Where's... Look at... It's all new. It's cool. Check it out. Oh, I like it. If I win, I'll uh, mail mine to uh, Eric Augustine. Okay. Deal made. Deal is done. Eric's my brother. <laughs> Guys. First pancake. <laughs> Bingo. I don't want anybody to read this. It could be very... I could be... Oh, just oh. don't show everything you're not supposed to. All right. Call game. Bingo card number 001. All right. I think it's kind of fun. I like my new music. I'm happy. I like the new background. I'm really happy. And so because of that. Nice. Dang yeah. it. Yeah. I, I love eclecticness. And this is it. Oh, that is a great background. Right? Doesn't that just make you feel happy? Uh, right there at the chop. It shows you how to get a bingo card. And I'm sure everybody's ready. And if you are ready. Time to rock and roll. I, I can't. I'm having a problem with the mouse. Uh, Dave says I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm OT trimmed, but my curtains are not as glorious. Oh, uh, well. I'm not trimmed. In the eyes of trimmed. the beholder. Uh, so the Jim Carrey said, uh, we have a whole world of men growing out beards and shaving their balls. Yeah. Explain that one. How about well, that shirt? I know. Actually, like... Gotta say, it's like a wearing a piece of Mint. menthol gum. It's just like feels like someone just blowing lightly 
from a bag. <laughs> and well, you I were am. you were sucking. <laughs> Get out of here, Jess. <laughs> you were sucking lightly on uh, the bobbin. <sighs> uh, Delin's in the house. I think what? you know her. She might be my sister. What's up, yeah. sis? Good Can't to be see your face. Okay, guys, this is. Oop. Dude, I am liking this bingo music actually. Like, I know, right? I, I, keeps I hate to like, like to say anything good about music because normally it's awful, but Dana's been doing a great job today. <laughs> Take it. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be in my head, like All, the whole the, drive home. Like the whole drive home. <laughs> yeah. Very so, good. boys, girls, they whatever you wanna. Associate yourself with, but remember that bingo is won by yelling "What, Tim?" Bingo. And what? You also need to let us know the card ID and which call it happened on. So if you on wouldn't happen on call three, but if it was on call three, you'd say call three slum hopper, and this is my ID code, so we can verify. There may or may not be ties. It does happen, and if it does, we have a solution for that as well. Because sometimes it seems like it's like everybody wins on the same call, but. Well, I want to show us all of them. It's all right. He doesn't want to show Ooh, us. Oh, it's big. It's part of the eclecticness here. <laughs> so we'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> the <Right> grunter. <laughs> I like it. Oh, well, that's Rainbow Dart. <laughs> Rainbow Dart. So you got the Thin Mint, the Kagas, Hula Charlie, the Slum Hopper, and the Rainbow Dart. That's your first four calls. Have we said what it has to be? Yeah, it's got four corners. Oh. It's right there on the screen. Four corners. This is the hardest one to get. Four corners, folks. Four corners of your card. Four corners. You say bingo and your card number. And if there's a tie, we have a tiebreaker. We just literally plump it in here. Tiebreaker, and it says there it is. Oh, Ricky has two already. Oh, he's going for it, guys. I've got to be better and figure Dude, out why music. this isn't working. The it's music is strange that it's not showing you. See the first four. I guess he's got to do extra calls. <laughs> and he's 0 for four. It's pretty normal for him. Oh, there we go. There we go. There it is. Last chance. Purple haze is call number five. Yeah. See, I did it. Done figured it out. Four corners. All right. Maybe maybe we're playing last year's cards. I don't even know <laughs> at this point. Wine, Wine booby. Booby. Oh, somebody Ooh, in the hillbilly. I got one house. corner, guys. One corner. Somebody in the hillbilly. Oh, house. Jess has got two for four. See guys, this and is why we gotta corner. take a bit of time. Because there's a bit of a delay between you and us and Tim and Chaz and all the things. The interweb. Oh, Terry. <laughs> Terry, that, that round card gets you every time. Four corners. Uh, is Justin watching? Justin sent me some message. And uh, shipping depends. Asked about how long it takes to ship. Um, yeah. Depends on where you are. Let me do another call. Let me do another call. I'm going to respond to Justin. All right. You got the Crelix Minnow. Call number seven. Remember, we need the call that you went on. We need bingo. And we also need your card ID. Card ID. Um, so if you are new and playing bingo for the first time, oh, good Lord. <sighs> what are you waiting for? I love you. Lots of good things to win. Can we plug in this toaster or what? They don't even know. Oh, I can plug it in. Mm -hmm. Where's the toaster at? Oh, it's right here. They don't even know. The problem is Ken wired the studio and that toaster <laughs> goes down. The whole system probably goes down. There'll be a toast out in the hallway. <laughs> All right. What's happening? Okay. Justin's watching and it's Canmore. Um, I'm pretty sure that if I shipped it out tomorrow, it would get to you by Wednesday or next week. Or you could uh, meet Tim at the lake on Saturday and pick it up from him. I was I, was I invited? Pain. You're invited. You just never go. <laughs> this music is so epic. It is, man. Uh, I, I want this like soundtrack for your life. Yeah. Okay. This um, is what it sounds like when I walk onto a job site. <laughs> yeah, it's a circus. <laughs> <laughs> You're constipated? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. Okay, Squirmy wormy. Scroll. It's a fly coming up next. It's in the corner. So this is it's four corners yet. Yeah. So if you guys look at the top of the screen, usually we write in there what it is. So you need one, two, three, four corners. We'll never do blackout again. Oh, yeah. that was terrible. <laughs> An hour and a half later. What if I fill all but a corner? Well, you're four corners less. Four. I don't I don't hate this anymore, Tim. No, you're getting used to it? <coughs> yeah. I just realized I don't have to get down here and yeah. slump it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get to, you one. Yeah, we need to adjust this camera angle slightly next time. Like up a bit? Yeah. I feel yeah. like I'm just like if I stand up. I feel like if I touch it, everything will just fail. I, I know for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> These are things we know. <laughs> oh yeah, roll of dimes, Kenny. Well, Ken, Ken roll of dimes. Remember roll of dimes? Well, that's why uh, they're Farmers scared to come. They couldn't deal with a roll of toonies. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh. Come on, guys. Sword oh, big Rick, Rick Flink. <laughs> Rick. Rick. You know how many times I think. Oh man, I love it. This is the the Jedi yeah. Master. I know, but the best part is yet to come. <laughs> Justin Collier, you're awesome, and you're about to be grateful you didn't win bingo. Okay, Rick, it's it's not the first time. We need to know what's your bingo card. Oh, okay, seven. Okay, so one. we just stick it in here. Oh yeah. Bingo, uh, bingo, bingo. Also, bingo, you could, bingo. There it is. Looks like we've got a wiener. We got a wiener. Bingo bango on the purple soft haze. Not bad. Not bad. All right. Well, folks, do we have any competitors? I don't see anybody. Maybe, maybe like this is on a different circuit than out there. Maybe just go upstairs and do it. I know, but <laughs> same breaker. <laughs> roll the <of> dimes. <laughs> I think it's roll the dice. <laughs> roll the dimes. <laughs> um, you could do. You could do takes one of each, whatever. Uh, oh yeah. Anyways, looks like it's Rick. Yeah, yeah. I'll do raisin. Should just do them both. So you got to taste them both. Okay, folks. Well, that's how bingo works. And everybody says, ah, oh, my goodness. What, what did he say? <laughs> they say this. Oh! Oh, Rick, we love you. You're, <laughs> You're the best. But Rick knows better. <laughs> They're all eating a bit. And you got one. <laughs> and I'm just hoping that, uh, Rick, best of luck as we move forward. And uh, remember <laughs> the captain... And the wizard oh, didn't show up tonight, so I it's didn't. just me and Tim. What does that mean? Can't mean anything good. What did you do? Nothing to me. Oh, shoot. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, it's the wrong one. You're in the wrong one. I put you in the wrong <laughs> hole. <laughs> Uh, it's just me that's acting like this. Oh, man. Okay, so okay. Jamie Kerr's in the house. Yep. And Rick wins, and he thinks, oh, man, bingo. It's for free. It normally is. I got to change your voice. <laughs> okay. Tim, entertain people. Oh, I'm entertaining. It's to be more entertaining when I sound like that. Come on. You can do it. There's If you could see the amount of buttons that are over there to press... It's it's actually this is why I'm over here and he's over there. <laughs> <laughs> Too many buttons, and they're all glowing different colors. Oh man, it's working hard. Oh, oh, work so hard, you missed me. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, free. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if Chaz is on the same wavelength of us, but <laughs> just when you thought it was free, Rick what? can't hear us very well. Well. <laughs> Better turn up your volume. Yes, you need to. You better turn up the volume. The volume. Well, Doug, the only way to get a sun shirt that Tim has is to win one. Maybe there's some other ways later on. Maybe later. Unfortunately, it's time for the doors. I know. Of. Uh, I'm scary, Tim. 
Well, I can't act goodness, scary when my, my voice goodness, sounds oh like my this. Goodness, oh my goodness, oh my this goodness. is the wrong voice. Wow. Wow. What is happening? Wow. Oh my Rick, goodness. you're dead. Rick, Rick, Rick that's Rick. your head. Rick, your things aren't gonna end well, oh, Rick. Man. Well, look at this. In here. This is kind of neat. I know. I mean, I know. You can tell by the way it is. Just by the way it is. <laughs> by the way it is. It looks so neat. I think it would be better if we sound a little more uh... scary. Oh, yikes! See what I did there, Tim? I Tim? did. I don't. I justifiably I... did the right thing, you and did. I made this. Oh my goodness! There's so there many is doors. No door number ten. That's the wizard's home. The wizard hole? Rick Flint picked door number one. He oh. didn't even think about it. He just said one. One. So what does it mean? These all these doors? Well, there's just a lot of options. For what? Like, what do I win if I get every door? Win all of this stuff. If? But unfortunately, you might not win if you don't choose the door wisely. Oh man, this is a. I know. I've got a lot of choices. I know. But Elaine wants to. Elaine, Doug. It's Doug. That joke, Doug. Oh, yes, so, the fact of the matter is that Rick has chosen. He didn't even want to call a friend. Nope. He didn't even want to call... What are the other options I don't even remember? 50-50. He didn't even yep. want 50-50. Nothing. So... These well, are options? No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I feel... I feel like a bully when I'm in that voice. Oh. I just simply want to show back. everybody what happens that you choose your door wisely because all of these prizes, they hang in the balance of the wizard. The wizard chooses whether you win or lose. And unfortunately, sometimes you just don't win. And sometimes, it's 841, we got to tie a fly here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he chose number one. Next time! <laughs> he did not win. He's quite uh, simply a loser. Uh, Next that time, sucks. Rick. Sorry, Rick. But at Next least time. all these prizes get to go to next week. I know. Stack so them up. I've done some new things this year. What have you done? And I would like to reveal it for everybody to just show that actually the wizard does have a heart. Okay, let's see. see Jennifer would have... So, everybody who's picked a door, um, just pick your door. Be like, I want to pick this door. And then you can ask yourself if you win. Right? Because I'm going to reveal all the doors just so people... It's going to be a long season. But you know what happens when Rick doesn't win this week. All of these prizes except... You know what, Rick? I don't know. We gotta get that cinnamon spread out of here because it's not gonna last. <laughs> That's true. So maybe, uh, thanks for coming out, Rick. Get some Rick's a hard one to spread. shoot to. He's the one with the fly rod that kept getting sent back oh, from the no. border. So, well, maybe the border people will eat your cinnamon spread. That's gotta get out the door, Rick. So I'm, gonna, right. I'm gonna not do a total something loser. to send you the cinnamon spread. Anyways, do this. what happens is you choose a door, and so Rick chose one, and then ask yourself, what did I choose? Will I be winning? Because you think winning's rare, but actually I've put more options up there. So, number two, next time. Next time. Number, number three, three next, next time. time. Number four. Number four, next time. <laughs> There's no more options. Number five, next time. This and they get cruel. switched every week, if I remember. <laughs> and number six is the winner. Oh, six was all the number. Stuff. All the stuff, all the stuff. Oh, everything would have been there. Number seven is next time. <sighs> number, number eight. eight. Stickers. stickers! Oh, we love stickers. Yeah, and number yep. nine is 50% off a of season six kit. Oh, look at you go! So I'm probably gonna add a few more in there. Oh, one thing like, like, it. like you it. know, I don't know. I gotta talk to the wizard. He's on holiday, so yeah, I, I control. Yeah, I did I controlled what was happening there. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how that goes. That's actually pretty fair. That's kind of how that goes. All right. Tim. Oh, 
boy, what do we got here? This looks yummy. Oh, it's for both of us. All right. Oh, let's figure it out, folks, because... Take your piece. You got some raisin spread. A raisin? I've, I've already had a lot, Tim. Your turn. Okay, I'll eat this one. Hopefully Chaz brought me a, a beard wipe. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, from our friends at Friesen Brothers, this is the sourdough we've been dreaming of. Oh, that's good. Sorry, Rick. Not getting your spread now. <laughs> it's unfortunate to be Rick. That is really good. <laughs> I know. Maybe you should just take them home because Rick can't win them. I'm taking them. Like the sourdough. That is so good. All right. We're going to tie a worm. A squirmy worm. Yeah. There's really not much for education on the squirmy worm. There's so much. It's kind of like a cheating fly. Not true. Worms just live in places that fish live. And obviously, since you were like five years old, you were dunking worms and the fish were eating them. And they squirm sometimes. And so ah. then we tie a squirmy one. It's true. And probably the thing I know mostly about the squirmy worm. Yeah. Well, when all else fails, because sometimes it does all fail and we can't catch fish. Okay? Yep. Just because you paid us to take your fishing doesn't mean we know what we're doing. <laughs> Shh. Giving away our secrets. Don't tell Sean that. <laughs> Sean has his own unique <laughs> skill set. <laughs> He's a farmer <laughs> of trout. Is that a skill? <laughs> Anyways, it's a squirmy worm. Oh my, it's like two materials, like bread and a bead and some wormy squirmy stuff. Um, but you this. gotta have a bunch in your in your kit. Awesome. Because ultimately, them flies. Trust me, I have a friend named Dave Spencer. And one time, we couldn't catch a fish, and he was a guide. He wasn't a guide. I was the guide. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to him, I know this isn't for free, but <laughs> do you, <laughs> would you, would you love to try one of these flies? And I said, we well, don't tell anybody. So we cut our fingers. We became blood brothers. I'm not sure why I'm telling this, because that's totally disrespectful. Is it? Well, if we swore, we would never tell people. Oh, yeah. Just tie the floor. Anyways, he caught a fish. The rest is history, and he comes back every year, and he thinks I'm a god. That, I don't think that's true. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> John wants to know what's a fish. Well, there's a thing we tell 13-year-old boys, and it's, it's called fur blasting. <laughs> I won't share what it means, but essentially it's the same thing it's as not Sean. Sexual. It's really not. <laughs> not knowing. <laughs> it has nothing to do with curtains. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. We love Sean. Oh, man. If it wasn't for Sean, there would be no wizard. There and would that's be. a fact. So, anyways, Tim, why don't you tie a fly? All right, let's tie a fly. Let's change that. Oh, that's better. Sound like myself again. I'm going to switch mics. No falling. No falling. Oh, come on! You're killing me! I don't know how to get it off! I can't tie like this. I can't work in these conditions. I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> yes, you do. Press no, the right button. I don't. Uh, I can't do this. There's no seriousness to this voice. I'm going to try my best. Come on. Get it right. I actually don't. Oh, my gosh. I... Mildly better. <laughs> ah, there it is. Oh, well, we're back. All right, that's good. That's much better. Gosh, I don't know. How I'm supposed to tie under these conditions. Okay, we got a squirmy worm, guys. Let me toss him in the vise. You get a little peek at it. So another fairly simple fly, but big butt on this one. The material itself is a nightmare to work with. 
But I'll teach you some techniques that hopefully make it a little easier. Okay, so this is our squirmy worm. It's uh, it's squirmy, it's pink. We normally tie these in pink or red. You can get squirmy material in all sorts of colors, but this is kind of our go-to. My go-to is this specific color in pink. Um, I don't know what it is about it, but it, it does work like Dana said on those hard days. So let's go ahead, let's get into our kit. So this is what your kit's gonna look like. You can tell it's got all the pink squirmy in there. You probably got enough squirmy to tie like 10 of these. Um, I tied six or seven out of the last package and still had lots left over. So remember your staple trick. Let's get that packaging open um, and let's get to it. So this one material wise is very, very simple. We're literally gonna have a hook, a bead, and then what we call this uh, this squirmy material, okay? Um, and there's lots of different companies that make this material now. Most major brands have some sort of um, squirmy worm material. I don't think that all squirmy material is the right squirmy materials. I have, some of it's really thin, um, but you should be able to tell just looking at the package. Normally it's the stuff you buy off like Amazon that's not as good. Um, so just go to your fly shop, get, get a decent amount of it, it's cheap. You can tie a lot of flies out of it and uh, you'll be a little less disappointed because the really cheap stuff is normally fragile and breaks when you try to tie with it because it is like a rubber material. So um, yeah, best to kind of stick with the decent stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> like we did with the last fly, you know, we've got a bead. Let's stick, stick that hook in the small side of the bead, okay? And slide it up to the eye. I'm gonna go ahead and get it fixed in your vise. Um, we do need some access into the bend, but not near as far as the coronamid. Um, I like this style of hook for my squirmies because I feel like you get a better hook up on it. Um, you got more curve to the hook. It seems to, to lodge in the, in the mouth of a, a fish a little bit better um, because of the size of the hook and the shape. So we got that in there like that. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm using a little different thread for this one. So I'm using uh, UTC, <clears throat> this time it's gonna be 140. So it's a little bit thicker. And the reason why I want a little bit thicker thread is because we can manage this material and get it onto the hook a little better with it. Cause this, you're gonna see how this material um, reacts. It likes to kind of jump around and roll on the hook shank, which is um, a little frustrating. So <clears throat> it's best to have a little bit thicker material or thicker uh, thread to tie this with. So I got my pink stuff here. Um, you could tie it with a red or a white or a black. It really doesn't matter. You can't see it very well through the material anyways. I just chose this because it kind of matches. So like we said before, um, when we're talking about how to start thread wraps, um, hold on to that tag end, come in behind the bead and start taking a few wraps back over top. I want to leave a little bit of room by that bead. So you can see we'll use that term we called a bead length. So we're going to leave a bead length roughly behind the hook shank or behind the bead itself before we start going up the hook shank. And I want you to take a good thread base down here. And reason being for this is that, um, like I said, this material likes to kind of squirm, no pun intended. It likes to squirm around on the hook when you're trying to tie it in. So lay a good thread base down, like just go, go to town. We're not worried about the bulk we're putting on it. I'm going to go back and forth a couple times. Thank you, Dana. That is so good. Um, and then we're just basically going to leave our thread somewhere in the middle. Okay, just, you can leave it there. We don't have to put the save button on. We'll leave it as is. So what I want you to do, excuse me, <clears throat> is go to your tying desk. Look for the thickest thread you have. It doesn't have to be super thick. You can do it with thinner stuff, but we'll go with whatever the thicker stuff you have is. I want you to cut off about a four inch piece of it. So I'll show you the one I got here. I'm just using some black. This is just UTC 140, okay? If you have some bead wire, you can use that as well. That's my preferred. I didn't have any here today, so I'm just using this. Um, fold it over so you can see you've got a loop on this end, two open ends here. Put a little bit of moisture on it and slick those two together at this end. So those are kind of paired up. Now, how I'm gonna get, as you can see here, <clears throat> you can see that that squirming material comes actually right out the front of the bead. So how we're gonna achieve that is by doing this little technique I'm gonna show you. You got your, uh, your thread kind of slicked together. Now I'm gonna turn it around and point it at the back end of my bead. Okay, so I'm gonna come into my bead like this. I'm gonna push that bead back just a smidge. I'm gonna slide that thread through the bead and you can see it coming out the front of the eye there, okay? I'm gonna pull that down a little bit and you can see that it just leaves that loop. And that loop is what we're gonna use to actually pull the squirmy material back through the bead itself. Dude. Yeah, he's uh, he's having a moment over here. <laughs> this is so 
trying to figure out how he's how that's been accomplished in the past um but this is how we're gonna do it so i want you to stick grab so you're gonna have kind of like a little a whole mess of this stuff kind of attached like this so it'll be attached on there just pull one of them off you should be able to get at least two flies out of each piece of this i'm gonna slide this little bit of squirmy material through that loop okay and i'm gonna pull out just a little bit of extra not crazy long we can trim it if we need to um, and then I'm just gonna pull on these two pieces here, okay? So you can see it cinches up, and it's gonna actually pull it through that bead. Pulls through, grab those two ends so it doesn't pull out on me. So that loop is what we're using to pull this material through. Once I got a generous amount out like that, then I'm gonna abandon my thread. I'm gonna use my fingers, and just keep pulling until you find the end that's the, the small end, and get it to pull through. I'm gonna pull it a little bit more, get a hold of it. It's kind of sticky, but you can see how stretchy this material is. You can actually put quite a bit of tension on it. So there we go, popped out the front. So you can leave it whatever length you want. I prefer to not have a super long one. I don't, I don't know about why fish eat this the way they do, but I feel if when I leave my, um, <clears throat> my pieces score me too long out the front or too long out the back, I just find that I get a, a, a not as good a hookup and I miss some fish that way. So I'm gonna leave it like so. Now I wanna slide that bead right down against the eye. So basically this is helping keep that right on top. So what, we, what we're what we trying to achieve is that both pieces of squirmy that are coming out the front and the back are right on top of the hook. That's gonna make it the most realistic um, versus having, let's say, you know, if this, if this one comes here and it slides down underneath and it's coming off kind of the bottom, you know, that doesn't look as realistic. And the, and the whole worm if it's not where it is, but you can see that I can actually kind of adjust that just by pulling on it even when it's once it's tied. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do from here is I'm gonna pull that up. I wanna take my thread. I'm gonna do some thread wraps right behind the bead. Let's take a few in there. And then from there, I wanna lift up on that squirming worm. And this is where you're first gonna kind of notice how this material reacts. So the key here is instead of putting some really tight wraps right away, you wanna pull up a little bit, make it a little bit thin and then you wanna take some light wraps. So you see I'm putting very little tension on it. It's not squeezing it down at all. I'm gonna take like four or five wraps before I really start to pull down. And what's gonna happen is, <clears throat> as soon as you pull hard, it's gonna to wanna, to, you can tell there, it's already spinning it towards your side. But we still maintain the front one where it is. That's what we care about most. So then I'm gonna take some third wraps back against that bead to try to lock that in place. Cause your thread will help you do that. So I'm just taking some thread wraps back against that bead. Build that up a bit. Now I'm gonna to come to about here. Take a couple of thread wraps down, pinching that squirmy material back down, and then I'm gonna fold it back over. I'm gonna take some thread wraps over top of it. This is gonna help this really start to, because once we start palmering or wrapping this forward, we want it to be um, sticking to that those thread wraps the best we can, and this kind of gives us a jump start on it. So once I got to that point, I'm just gonna really work that in. So I cover up that little ramp I'm creating going down the fly. You'll see this stuff wants to just wrap around everything. Just unravel it. <clears throat> so now I'm here. I'm in a good spot. My squirmy worm material is still coming out the front. And now I'm going to start palmering it back. Now, your first instinct here, might just be... Just hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. we got to catch yeah. up on the audience. Okay. Let's catch up. Um, so a couple things are... Uh, trout's back. What's so up, obviously trout? it's crude and rude and awesome. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, a floss puller, a bobbin threader to get the squirmy through. Yep, those all work. I think sometimes with the bobbin threader, it's very sharp or yeah. can be because because of, of the product. Yeah. Um, might be able to fit a roll of dimes through there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, floss, floss threaders. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Okay. It's like my mom's here. <laughs> What's up? All right, Tim, be kind. Oh, now we have to act nice because your parents are in the house. Yes. <laughs> Good. Okay, so <clears throat> we've basically got this ready to start wrapping. So when we start palmering this back, you can see when we did it, let's say, on this guy here, it kind of, again, makes some kind of funky segmentations going back down the fly. You want to stack those wraps the best you can, but you're going to notice that they want to roll around on you. So your first instinct might be, well, let's get this thread all the way back to the back. But kind of like when we work with peacock curl, it actually strengthens it and it helps stack the wraps. If we leave our thread there, 
and start wrapping back the material, it's, it slowly moves that thread to the back, but it holds the material where we want it to stay. So I'll just start wrapping. And you don't wanna, when you do your wraps, you don't wanna pull super hard because then it thins it out really, really thin. We wanna leave a little bit of bulk in it. So I'm basically gonna use my finger up here to hold the wrap, that first wrap to kind of get it started. Where it is. You don't want it to wrap back over itself. So it's this is where the whole funky material part starts. We're gonna start to slowly. Tim, summer mom says hi. What's up, mama? My summer mama, love her to death. It's only gonna take three or four wraps to get back. And you can kind of see that you can actually shift these wraps once you have a few down. But you're trying to kind of just get the best segmentation possible. I don't love how that looks right at the head, so I'm gonna adjust it. I'm actually gonna wrap the other way, stack it a little bit better. But then we just keep a fairly even tension as we move back. One wrap behind the other. Like so. Okay. Once we get back to near the bend of the hook, I'm going to bring my thread back into play. And we want to do the same thing we did everywhere else when we touch this material. We want to do some light wraps. You can see it's trying to roll away from my thread there. So you got to go light, and then you can start putting some tension down. It, it can be a bit of a frustrating material to work with at times. But the goal is to secure it at the back and have it come straight off the back. So at this point, I'm happy. It looks like it's going straight out the back like I want it to. I'm gonna put a couple more thread wraps. But if I pull super tight, it's still gonna to wanna to roll that around. So I'm doing my best to not pull super tight. You can kind of adjust those wraps a bit if you need to. The fact is, these things don't last. So <clears throat> that's why we tie lots of them and we'll have a lot in our box because when we're fishing them, you get maybe one, two fish out of it and it's probably gonna fall apart because it is a fairly fragile material. So normally we whip finish our flies at the front of the fly, but this time we're actually gonna whip finish at the back of the fly. So I'm gonna loosen off a little bit of thread here, try not to pull too much tension. I'm gonna slide this up and over and I'm gonna whip finish this right at the back. Try to do two to three turns, tighten it down. There is there is different ways of tying the squirming worm. Everybody kind of has their own way. I do it one of two ways. This is one way. Maybe one day I'll show you the other way. But the important part of here is to get a couple of good knots because we're not gonna use resin on this. The fact is, as soon as you put resin on this, it actually completely dissolves the fly. I've made that mistake many times and I've, tr I've like tested it to see what you know what resin affects it what doesn't and i'm telling you every resin cut or will just yeah absolutely one time tim so, made me a bunch of flies i did and he opened his box and they all fell apart so go ahead and trim out that thread out at the end and then we're just basically going to trim this tail to match the front roughly length trim that off and then i like to kind of pull it out of the vise try to get you can kind of play with it a bit and rearrange where it's sitting on there trying to get the, the best orientation possible. Because like I said, this material kind of moves for you, so you can you can adjust it a bit, make it look a little better. And probably the first cast, it's all gonna fall in a different direction. But there is there is so, your squirm wait. worm. Yes. Oh no, you're finished, you're good, you're good. You're good. And everyone's gonna look so, like for instance this one, looks a little different just in how the wraps lay. Every time you tie it, you're gonna feel like it worked better or worked worse. I did like 10 of them today and they everyone looks a little different. Um, but the gist of it is that <clears throat> if you can get a good securing wrap to keep this, this guy up on top of the hook, and if you can finish off with holding that in a good position at the back um, and staying off, um, that's a great option. The other option that I use when I tie this fly is I'll tie in the front, it's the same. And instead of wrapping it back, I'll just tie it to the top of the hook shank to the back. And then I just use dubbing and I'll go, I'll put a dubbing layer over the top here in pink or red. And that, that works just as well. Sometimes it's a little easier to work with the wraps um, doing it that way, but either way it works. Everybody's gonna have their own thing. The one thing I don't like that I've seen a lot of people, it feels like they're cheating in how they tie this now, is instead of having anything out the front, they just tie that in behind the bead and they just have a long tail. Um, I've had a few of them, I've fished a few of them and I didn't have much success. I find that having that extra squirmy material out the front really seems to aid in the appearance of that worm. The jiggly poo. And it does. When you see it in the water, you just kind of see those like, these pieces of squirmy material just kind of dancing and floating. It looks super realistic. 
Um, I would say I caught my first fish on the bow with one last year because I really tried it. But the bow really doesn't seem to be the place. All for right, we're going to go to commercials. <laughs> Tim's telling some terrible <laughs> lies. and It's my opinion. <coughs> it's just my opinion. It's, uh, it's an... It's interesting this fly uh, because it's it's a worm, and uh, I have a weird theory. Take it or leave it. But the the darker the green of your water, the, the less the squirmy worm works. It's not a terrible theory. The other theory is the more translucent the green, the better the squirmy works. I also like the pink flies in. Kind of that like aqua. I I don't know why this. I don't. I have no scientific evidence. I just have done it. And uh, but as you get into those earthy green, uh, hunter dark green or waters like the bow, tail waters, uh, brown chenille tends to be pretty what? good. Who's giving away secrets now? It's not a secret. It's just. I mean, Dan Elstrom. <laughs> Dan. Do, do Dan. Dan, do Dan. D, D, D. Dan, Dana, Dan. Dan, Dan didn't do Dana. <laughs> <laughs> That's next summer. <laughs> um, but yeah, try it. So how would you fish it? So a couple ways you could fish this. You could fish it uh, just straight up under an indicator. No weight. Uh, Timmy should switch mics. Switching mics. There you uh, go. Chaz, your mic is hot. Mic uh, is hot. Mic is hot. So under an indicator, dead drift. Uh, I think a really effective way is to put a split shot as your point fly. So you could go split shot, squirmy worm, squirmy worm, squirmy worm. <laughs> why would you do anything else? I mean... Free flies? Uh, I don't know why it works. Because... Nothing like this exists in some of the watersheds that we fish that it works in. And uh, I will admit one time a client said to me, do you have any squirmy worms? And I said, no, because I thought it, uh, it's not, not my thing. It would have been my thing. It is my thing. And he gave me some. And we did it as a hopper dropper. So another great way to fish this fly and... We were 17 for 18 casts. That's insane. Ooh. And I became a believer. <laughs> became a believer. And then I said to Tim, hey, tie me up some of these. So Tim was so excited to do this for me. He Failed brought them to me. And uh, I went to try them. <laughs> and they all completely melted in my fly box, to which then we learned that they don't take well to resin so having said that don't put resin on them right? no resin you do not want to do it yeah so split shot and now that's just all up to you about how fast how deep whatever are you moving are you standing all those things but under an indicator uh, is probably the best way to fish them because I have not seen any dry fly takes on a squirmy worm not often no not often enough. Sometimes nothing makes sense. So why do you think that people think it's not a fly? Or what's your what's your argument against it not being a fly? Uh, well, probably because... I don't know. It's a hard one because there's like... There's this, there's this old methodology of... Or a, a train of thought that if you use rubber... That rubber or plasticky rubber materials... But it's fake. It's, it's, yeah. But, so but like, like how many of those materials are like, synthetic? Well, now there, a lot there of them used to are. be. Remember the Michigan yeah. dry skunk we tied? Yeah, used to and, be like complete. Yeah, it was natural like, products. But nowadays, I mean, even you know, all think of all of our guide flies, like you know, I don't, Jimmy legs. It's yeah. like all synthetics, completely with rubber legs. Um, but a lot of the old school thought is that you know, using synthetics or rubber is not. Yeah. But if you tie it and you fish it with a fly rod. I mean, maybe not a Rapala with a fly rod. Wait, <laughs> are we telling dirty? Is this no. dirty secrets? <laughs> no, not that dirty. Um, it's an interesting train of thought because I'll have I have two kinds of people, fishermen. I'll, 
those who go to catch those who they don't go fly fishing they go fly catch it fly fish catching catching fish they need to catch fish and we could talk about this all season something i would love to discuss there's also people <coughs> um who absolutely despise this whole idea of of tying flies it's not traditional it's goofy it's weird it's out of the norm the the, the kits of materials oh my goodness you package them in plastic bags you've scrunched the hackle you've done the blah 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 well if you ever had a fish eat your fly they also scrunch the hackle <laughs> yeah and so i guess you gotta just ask yourself because there's artists who tie flies and there's pure art there's also people who tie flies to to fish and there's people who tie flies in, in a guiding aspect where it's got to be simple effective efficient it's got to last squirm worm it doesn't last. It's a no. it's a fly for a fish. <clears throat> so I know Scott asked the question, but like, it can be bad squirming material. It can be the fact that your thread's wrong, mm -hmm. and if you use too thin of thread, um, whether it's a, a UTC or a, a Nano Silk or what's the other yeah, one? Danville. Dan or, like yeah. there's there's different threads, and they can cut it, and or it can get snagged on the bottom, or like there's a lot of reasons that it could fall apart but <clears throat> they don't last so tie a bunch of them and just kind of um another thing you can do though is when they don't last is just bring the hook and the bead home yeah. and, and retie it time yeah because that squirmy material is not expensive and uh i like what roger said there he's like it replicates a food substance that fish eat just like most other flies we tie it just reminds people of bait given the that, rubber that's, that's Chaz, it. i'll have another <clears throat> Betcha. Something if you're out and about. <laughs> How was that uh, cream, the farmer's tan? Farmer's tan was good. You know what? It was very mild. Very mild in flavor? Very mild. Oh, and nice. it very much resembled the other. Very, like, easy to drink. Very easy to drink. Yeah. Yeah. But I think... Um, sure. Uh, so, whatever... Well, Sean's squirming worm last because it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't get catch eaten. any fish. Uh, whatever eaten. bends the rod. So <laughs> there's a question, like, should you use a... So this is just straight up. You can't see. It won't focus. People skills from Toolshed. It is It is one of my favorite beers. Yeah, it's a good one. It is so good. Um, from our friends at Craft Beer Nation. Craft Beer Nation. Um, yeah, I, lots just, of I think of, like, I think of a client... Yeah, I know he's not watching, so I can call him out. Um, from this summer, one of the most amazing dudes, Rock. Um, he did. He's done so much for, well, in Montana specifically, preserving a lot of watersheds. He's just an incredible human. But I had him by myself on day one of, I think, six days we were with him, and uh, he wanted to fish his own flies. His stuff he had tied. His stuff he's fished all over the world. He fished everything, and then you know, like about noon, one o'clock, he said, "Okay, I'm ready to catch fish." And then we fished the flies that he knew would work, but it. Every client has their own... Um, try them. Yeah, we, they, they want to try them, and that's okay. When Just, we go places, we try stuff, too. Yeah. Sorry, guys. My that's nose. You know what? That's one of the reasons I love this t this kit, right? Because you can go to the same stream, fish the same flies, catch the same style, right? Or you can try something new. Like, yeah. new stream, new person, new fly, and you catch, and you're like, well... Wow, you might be surprised, right? That, like, you, that it worked. worked. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love these kits for that reason. I, I spend all my summer catching fish, gold eye. Fish, yeah. <laughs> F that fish. But I spend all my summer fishing the flies out of this out of these kits. Yeah. What well, catches? I think what, like what all works. of us, we kind of get stuck in our. These are the patterns that work, and then once in a while, yeah. I mean, we do it as a guide group too. You know, somebody will be like, "Hey guys, like I just randomly tried this, and it's killing." like okay let's try it and maybe it's something you haven't thought of or it's something you stumble across in your kit you're like i mean we don't just do flies that we don't think work obviously we choose these flies quite specifically but um yeah try something new yeah don't be scared to try something to new. i some love these kits this is the best idea ever yeah um <clears throat> there we go so uh the idea with that is we're gonna get to our wins here uh shortly and that's the best part. If you haven't stuck around for the wins, we're going to share them here. Uh, so things to remember is that, like Chad said, you get to try different flies. 
you get to try different patterns. The idea behind fly tying, uh, if you're new, if you've been around for a long time, is just tr like experiment. Try it. Like bleep. I think I have a bleep. <laughs> you do. You haven't been using your sound effects much this year. On episode one. <laughs> episode one. <laughs> No, mm -mm. no nope. sound, sound effects. I tell you that bingo tune though. Oh, oh it's, man, maybe it's right here. Where is it? Where guys? Where's my beep? Bleep beep. Anyways, it kind of goes. <laughs> not it, not it. That's not but the right one. But I like it. Um, the point of that is, the perfection side of things, throw it away because it's unnecessary. And just tie flies, try flies, try flies. There we try go. flies. Instead I like of tie it. flies, try flies. Try flies when you're fishing. Try flies when you're tying. And uh, yeah, if you want to get a season six kit that we've got, we've got some left, and we'd love to get them to you guys. They're on our website, www.flyfishingbover.com slash TNLS6. You're essentially getting 26. Well, you are getting 26 patterns. I can't remember. 26 times 6, 154 or something. Uh, There's a lot of stinking, yeah. Yeah, and if that's too much, go in and try our 12 packs of kits, or try a one kit. It's 10 bucks, it's 10 bucks, and we'll and we'll get that out to you. You could try it out and see how it works. And uh, I mean, you get a fly already tied, so <laughs> worst case scenario. Worst you, you're good case to go. You're still fishing, still fishing. Okay, guys, don't leave. I promise you, the winds are the best part of this entire show. We just want to say thanks to our awesome sponsors again because they believe in us. Um, they keep this thing going. They give you, have you guys giveaways. Uh, and you know how you can say thanks to our sponsors is you can reach out to them. Morning View Mercantile, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, Shore Fishing, Fish Pond, Fly Fusion, Lyle Peterman Real Estate. If you're in the Calgary, Central, Southern Alberta area, reach out to them. Get your house assessed. Buy a house. Sell a house. Uh, who did? Friesen Brothers. Craft Beer Nation. Craft Beer Nation. Head up to Red Deer. Morning, Be like all like when you support them, when you reach out to them and say thank you, um, because this this show is free for everybody to watch and hang out and win stuff. That's how you say thanks to sponsors that are so awesome, that are giving of their time and money um, to keep this going. So, also, you guys who bought season kits. That's all part of uh, the funnel that keeps it going. So let's say thanks. Let's run our little commercial reel. We're going to come back. We're going to jump right into our wins. <clears throat> and then that's it. That's the kickoff for season six. Rogaine does not work. <laughs> In the heart of nature, when hunger strikes, the time is of the essence. Morning View Mercantile has the solution. Witness how we redefine convenience. It's not just a meal, it's an experience. In mere moments, a feast emerges. Delight in the flavors of the wilderness. Morning View Mercantile, your partner in adventure, your ally in taste. For every adventure, a memorable meal. Morning View Mercantile, where every bite is an expedition.
<laughs> right about now. <laughs> right meow. I told Tim we're about to go to the winds. Oh, we went Tim right said, to the winds. Next one. Next one. Not, not quite. Oh, <laughs> Jazz is full of red. I don't want him that much. <laughs> Just want to give him a little jam over there. Smidge jam. Smidgey. There it is. Everybody all rolled into one. And that's Mike's from last week, so it's going to go by. All right. What we do here is share our wins. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, wins. What's important now? This is, this, this is my favorite part of the show. Um, two, two hours and 20 minutes into it. Um, I talked about it in the beginning and the idea that the TNL fam was a phrase coined or a term coined or I don't know who, I don't know where it came from, uh, but it's true and it's factual. And the idea of this community, the sponsors, you guys, uh, get into like Eric coming from the, uh, Tennessee area up to guide school. Uh, it's just really cool, like how this this kind of all like pulls together. And uh, Mike wants to know if the capture contest. Uh, I'll address that next week because that's a long winded. <laughs> so what we do here is we share our wins. Tim will share. Chaz will share. Did we change it? No, we no, didn't. We did. You go first. And. Uh, I, I go last again. I, why don't we change a good thing? <laughs> Taz will go first. You'll go second. I'll go third. All and right. then you guys share. And then right underneath where it says, like, my win is, we're going to put your comment up there. Okay? So it'll look something like this. Just just because I, I think sometimes we don't tell people that it's going up there. Uh, so it'll, it'll look something like that. And it's good. It's important to share. We yeah. all get to celebrate together. We all get to support each other through things we're going through. All of it. It's amazing what that group, what this group has done in the last few years um, to support each other. So it's important to hear the good stuff too. Yeah. All right, Mr. Chaz. All right. You are up. I need I need that bingo music. That's, that's, <laughs> that's my jam. Uh, no. So what's important now? Like my win. I've got to say. Um, Thank you guys for letting me come down tonight. That that was really epic. I've been off for a couple of weeks from work, which I really, really needed. Yeah. And uh, got to do some winter camping with, you know, a couple of really good friends from work and, you know, my hunting buddy. And uh, then this week I got to take my wife out winter camping. And that was super fun. Like, that was so much fun. Went out for the one night. Um, we had uh, Morning View Mercantile. Yeah, for, uh, I saw that. For uh, supper. We had the pulled pork, which was fantastic. Yeah. So if you guys want some, like a good, good meal, like pulled pork was amazing. And uh, you know I'm I'm really excited for 2024, um, and I can't wait to you know spend the winter with you guys. And we had an epic year last year together, and more more memories made. And like uh, super happy to be part of this community. So thank you, thank you everybody up there, Eric. I do see your. 5,000 uh, memes every day. And, uh, <laughs> I, I love it, man. Like, yeah. he just reaches out and he's a, he's a, good, he's a good man. He's he, a good man. He, as we were tying the flies, he sent me some. <laughs> You're supposed to like, well, he's, no, he's not tying. <laughs> so I, I feel very blessed and thank you, everybody. And thank you, everybody who reaches out on Dads Who Matter. And it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. All good things. So I just wanted to finish answering the question I asked earlier about what's different this year than last year. Mm. And the reason you're welcome back, because you were kicked out, suspended <laughs> for a whole year. But as funny as it may be, Chaz is coming back on February 29th. Does that mean anything to you? Leap Maybe. year. Exactly. Oh. Oh, I didn't think of that. So because there's an extra day this year, ah, I thought. I saw what you did there. You hey, in. <laughs> Chaz, might as well be a part of the show on that extra day that, you know, well, it is what it is. So on February 29th, Chaz will be here, him in his green suit, 
<laughs> if you haven't watched that episode from last year, I highly recommend. Do not remember what episode, but the mayor will know, so he'll put that <laughs> in the comments. Oh, very good. My yeah, turn? Yes, it your turn. Okay. Uh, my win. So since I guess I saw you guys uh, last, I guess a couple weeks ago before Christmas, um, this last week was uh, me and Ren's birthday, which is a super cool thing to share with your kid. Um, she was born on my birthday, which was, uh, you know, a super blessing at the time. Didn't really realize that's what had happened, but you know how labors go and things. He didn't really remember what was going on, but, um, yeah, so I got to share that day with her and, um, had some time off with her this week and, um, you know, life gets busy and you don't always get a lot of time with your kid and, uh, was your birthday. Um, this is what we're doing. <laughs> Not today. So today <laughs> was your birthday, and I oh, think man. if I did it right, happy, 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 happy birthday. birthday, happy, happy birthday. birthday, it's your birthday. I don't know the words. <laughs> happy birthday. But it goes something Tim. like this: the confetti falls, and it is Tim's birthday. Ah, feels good to be twenty-five. I don't know. And I, don't know. I don't know how to <laughs> Ren's get birthday too. This Love you, Ren. Music and all that stuff. Oh, so much. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Ooh. Oh, wrong, wrong playlist. <laughs> wrong playlist. Hey, if you guys just hang with me, I'll get us going again. Uh, but yeah, so it was great. It was a great, uh, great week. I got to, you know, hang out with her a bunch this week. She's been off school. Um, you know, got to get out and do some fishing with her, just some different things. And uh, I don't know. I think sometimes you, you take for granted that, you know, you're with your kids all the time. But um, you never know. Life is short, right? So just yeah. take every every second you can um and so i'm super grateful for her um, and my wife and just yeah i feel really blessed um i think secondly to that um another win has just been seeing this uh this season come together this year um you know it's, it can be touch and go at times and we've talked about in the past where we know what our motivation is and why we're here and we're super grateful for everyone who supports us and that's what, I, that's what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for you guys. I'm thankful for our sponsors who pulled through this year. Um, everybody who bought kits, uh, that, it, I mean, you don't know what that means to us. Um, it's a lot of work, I think, for us, you know, putting those out there. We want them in your hands because we want you to see, you know, it's like your project. You, you did it and you want people to enjoy it. And uh, the amount of work that goes into it, we're, we're grateful to have all of you here and part of our family. So thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting us. And uh, we're really pumped for this season. Hundred percent. Yeah. <coughs> uh, a couple things to echo there. The what, like, um, when you guys purchase a kit, uh, I think that's kind of the way. As this show has evolved, as we've moved away from the breweries, we've come to the studio. We've come to studio number two. Um, it's just like it, it's a big commitment on our part to to be here to to do this. It's not something. We take for granted or we take lightly um but like everybody who i know some people in here don't really tie flies and they still buy a kit uh just to kind of keep this this thing going here and to everybody who has religiously been a part of tnl who has continually brought people to tnl who has tried <coughs> the kits who it's like the kits aren't perfect. You, they'll never be perfect. The cutting materials, the packaging materials, the idea of it all, <clears throat> it has no perfection because it's its always going to be done by hands and there's always going to be some sort of a mistake. Uh, and probably the biggest thing is the people who were here from season three um, and they've, they've just, they've stuck with us through the whole process. It's like, it, it's a very inspiring and it's motivating to keep going forward. <clears throat> and as season six unfolded, <coughs> it's just been really fun um, with some some new sponsors. We've got some you know sponsors who have been here with us since day one: Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, and Shore Fishing, and Fly Fusion. Uh, and they they just keep coming back every year, making the show bigger and better. De definitely uh, one of the wins <coughs> is that. Uh, of our sponsors, of the the kid purchasers, you guys are sponsors. <coughs> Ooh. Hmm. Probably trying to avoid talking about the next part. <laughs> <coughs> um, 
So this past, yeah, it's Christmas, it's time with family, and um, last week was uh, interesting. Uh, some of you people that are more local, um, Wednesday night, we got a message. Um, some people hadn't heard from uh, one of Matea's best friends. Matea is my 15-year-old daughter, and... Uh, yeah, so so the night kind of went into, we don't know if they're missing, we don't know, I don't know, you know, kind of every parent's worst nightmare is when your 14-year-old daughter calls you and says they're on their way home, and they don't show up. And about 10.30 that night on Wednesday last week, we got the call saying that uh, there, was, there was a really bad accident, and they they didn't make it so um it's interesting because like tim said and i said there's a couple things to echo there uh with that is just the the idea that like life is precious we know this um <coughs> but to think that a 14 year old and a 16 year old just like that life is over um saturday we had their funeral and I don't know is it a win I think I don't even know how I'm gonna pull this together like to make something about it but it's just it's just like every day is special with the people you love and I, I think that walking through this I, I just don't feel it just doesn't feel real um, I know at the funeral like Matea got up and, and shared some stories and that was that was pretty cool to just see her, you know, walk through it like that. But um, before I ramble on forever, just just appreciate your people and and realize like, whew, it's life is life is is fragile, and uh, yeah, so it's, a, it's gonna be a tough phone call to get. So. Hold your kids close. Just your friends, your kids, you guys, you guys that reach out. Like we're we're a family. This is our family, and uh, yeah, it's just crazy. It's crazy. It's it's like it's unfair. And I kind of had an epiphany through it all because I'm trying to find purpose in all things. <clears throat> and it's like I remember, well, Chaz was there. Uh, I, Chaz, he brought a friend, and the guy asked me, David said, um, do good people catch more fish or bigger fish? And it was a very interesting statement, mm -hmm. and I said, no. Although there's times where I wish the good people caught the big fish, because sometimes, you know, the not-so-good people caught the big fish. <clears throat> but then... Then I kind of had an epiphany. Remember this, Chaz? Yeah, I do, actually. And I was like... a special moment. Man. I'm like, here's what's cool about that is because... So, in life, uh, good things don't just happen to good people. Good things happen to bad people, and bad things happen to good people. But then that's kind of the cool thing about being good, right? Because, because there's no reward for that. Es essentially, hear me out right you're not guaranteed that good people go to heaven and good people get good things that happen to them and 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 bad. If, if that was the case everybody would be good so i also looked at it with lila i was like it's like she's a good person she's 14 why why does that happen to that person and then i just i just realized that because good things don't happen to good people there's kind of the that's the reason to be good because you're doing it in a very altruistic way and it's just the way that you want to be. So just to kind of honor her and her life, it's like, yeah, you just, you're just good. Cause it's, it's the thing to do and it doesn't guarantee you success. It doesn't guarantee you <clears throat> bigger fish. It doesn't <laughs> guarantee you, you know, the, all the, all these good things. Um, 
But that's kind of the value of being good is because there's 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 nothing that comes with it other than the altruistic just being good. That makes sense at all? Yeah, man. It's <coughs> being good feeds the people around you in the service of others. Yeah. That's that's why we're here, in the service of the people around us. Hundred percent. That's 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 what it's about. And you can't do that by being a bad guy or bad person. You got to you got to be good and it's got to be in service. And, the, and so the, in and the, service is good. Yeah, and the bad people, good things. I always like what that guy's such a douchebag. How does he have success? And it's like it, it, it it's it's a deep thought, but I encourage you to think about it. And no amount of doing good will bring Lila back. But but then it's just the point of being good. At the end of everything in life, if you were yeah. good, what did you miss out on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that just honors a, a kid, 14-year-old yeah. girl that, yeah. So that's, it's not a, it's, I don't know. Choose, choose as you wish. It's a share. <laughs> Sometimes it's a share. Sometimes yeah. it's a win. But uh, yeah, just like I think the real the real factor of that is like it could be any of your kids. Yeah, they just don't make it home. Mm -hmm. And it's like last night, Matea. I just had a long day, and she's like, "Hey, you want to go for a walk?" And I'm like, "No, I'm tired." And then I was like, "Man, I'm." like just change of mind i want to go for a walk because <clears throat> that's just time and like lila's mom said at the funeral she's like we got 14 years she gave us 14 years and that's beautiful and we could sit here and wish we had one more day or one more week or one more month or another year and she's like it's just never enough like that's that would never be enough so i mean yeah Take your time with the time you got, and that's about all I got. Mm -hmm. You guys. All right. <laughs> Trout's always good to laugh. <laughs> okay, so we'll go Tim, Chaz, Dana. All right. Cam, uh, his win for the week, uh, it's twofold. Happy to have my oldest home um, from New Zealand for the holidays. Uh, sad to see her leave Saturday. Um, secondly, glad to have friends who regularly check in on you or send, uh, <laughs> I think it's supposed to be dark, dark dank, dank, names dank both. To, get, to keep your spirits up. Um, <coughs> happy to have the TNL back. All right, Craig Jones. My daughter Carmen's win was tied to Cameron. Cameron, sorry, sorry. Uh, she killed it, especially on Squirmy. And taking your driver's ed this week. Uh, congratulations. My win is having her time with me and enjoying the evening together. Oh, man. Time. Yeah, he sent me some photos. Episode they were, they one were better than his. <laughs> uh, Jamie Kerr. My win is a big one. Uh, daughter had a big health scare just before Christmas. All is good. And now on the mend. Yeah, I saw that. Glad to hear Jamie. Uh, Adrian, my win, Stoke the TNL has started uh, getting over bronchitis, still working on ramping up the, f uh, the finishing weeks of the season. Grateful for the people around me and my kiddos. Go QB. Josh from Banff, win was that time he won all that swag from uh, the TNL. <laughs> so I think it's a bit of tongue, <laughs> tongue in cheek. <laughs> well, and speaking of which, Rick says, uh, my win is getting very involved in my local fly fishing international tying club and running several programs for the FFI fly tying group. Also a beautiful nine foot 10 fly rod. Finally, finally my favorite fly tying families back together yeah. Thursday evenings at Rick. We did. I did get your email. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, Ken win for the week, getting to spend a great new year's Eve with my family and friends. And for the first time I was able to tie flies. Um, without going to the quick ties. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh -huh. So glad to have TNL back. Jacob, super thankful for all the great people in the TNL community. Thanks for checking in on me today, Tim. Appreciate it. Super grateful for all the great people around me. Absolutely, brother. Mr. Cole, my win is having the TNL fan back. Excited to see what 2024 has in store. It is going to be a big one. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, Danny Ostrom, my win this week is just being here to hang out with my incredible humans. Uh, my kit got here, and I had an amazing Christmas Eve dinner with my family. More wins to come. It's going to be a great year. Love you guys. PB&J. PB&J. So PB&J <laughs> means peanut, or <laughs> peanut butter and jam. Now you know. <laughs> personal best, personal best, plural, and jollification. Uh, yes. Nice. Brian, win this week was back from... Uh, being back to for another season with the TNL family, looking forward to getting new tying room set up. Nice. And starting to get behind the vice more this season. The community has brought me some good vibes for the five years. I can't thank you enough. Oh, yeah. Ryan, we love you. Trevor, my win was being able to sign on for another season of Tying Flies and hanging out with some touch, top, touch knob, <laughs> <laughs> top notch <laughs> folks and heading <laughs> ice fishing this weekend. Nice. Mr. Allison, uh, his win recharged during Christmas and excited where 2024 takes us. Looking forward to building both of my new companies on top of my new farming career. Uh, hopefully, fish. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully I can afford, <laughs> afford to catch a fish again. Not this catch a fish. <laughs> nice. Scott, my win is being back with the TNL family. Happy 2024, everyone. Take a friend fishing. Uh, Bags, my win was spending a week off with the family on a pretty chill Christmas this year. Some really needed chill time to reboot and enjoy family time. That's awesome, Jerry. Happy, Happy birthdays. There you go. Uh, Mike, win, I'm a Texas boy who went to uh, UM. My Montana Grizzlies are in the FCS Natty in my Texas Nationals, Nationals in my Texas on Sunday. I will be there. Go Grizz. Great to be back with the TNL fam. Hillbilly, win for the week was being back here with all of you wonderful people on Thursdays. Also had a great quiet cr Christmas with the family and friends, and I got Dana and Tim under the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Linz. Oh, it was yeah. hard hiding there for those two weeks. <laughs> LPC, yeah. I know. Roger, our win. My youngest has had health issues that we have been chasing for years. We feel like we finally sorted out her issues, and with a change in diet and lifestyle, she's feeling like a new person. That's nice. awesome. That's epic. Mr. Terry, my win <clears throat> is lots this year. Epic seven-week road trip down through the southern states, home to enjoy time with my three young grandsons and their Christmas concerts. Joel and Alicia, home from Texas for New Year's, warm weather, and season six kicks off. Nice. Mr. Gene Aquilini. Oh, what's up, Gene? Gene. Love sharing the water with you boys as long as you stay on the other side of the river. <laughs> <laughs> Happy well, New Year, cutting fellas. Me, stop cutting me <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah, Gene. <laughs> Gene, why don't you go upstream <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from the boat launch? <laughs> we almost collided once this year. It was, yeah. uh, it was good. <laughs> Colleen, my win this week was a mega hug from a tiny little guy who's a bundle of energy and fun when we visit Rocky Mountain mm. Fly Shop. <laughs> I think she's talking about Colin or Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> no, no comment. I uh, gave her a hug when she came today, but I have not been identified list. as a tiny little guy. Uh, oh, Cam. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. All right. Ray, uh, my win for the week is being back with the Tino fam, spending Christmas in Oak Tokes with the family and friends. I hope Tim gets to do some fishing in New Zealand. I definitely will. A lot of people catch fish. Huh. Here's a really cool comment by Ryan because I said, I don't know if that's a win. And he said, it's what's important now. Yeah. Isn't that a whole perspective switch on me? <laughs> yeah. It's important. Right? Yeah. It's not, it's not the win, like how you would define win, but it's what's important now. And we've said that a billion times. <laughs> Why did that and not it click? just hit me? <laughs> it's true. Thanks, yeah. Ryan. Yeah, it's awesome, Ryan. Hmm. Mike, my win is being here. Be good because it feels good. Absolutely, buddy. Yeah, Tom. Lost my son in a car accident eight years ago. Have never been able to find any meaning to it or rationale. Bad things happen hard and it never leaves you. The, the pain I have is very tertiary to what you went through, Tom. Hmm. Uh, 
Eric, my win. The Tino family is back together again. I got to spend the last few weeks with an amazing lady. I feel God put us together. We are doing our best to honor God and date. Dana, Isaiah, 57.1. The righteous perish and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Love you too, Eric. Brent. Wynn is putting all the check marks in the boxes in preparation for next week. Yeah, he's getting oh, yeah. his uh, hips done. Heck yeah. That, that feels good. Lie, his hips won't lie. <laughs> the mayor. The Guys, mayor. this is the mayor. Mayor Barry Dicka. Love you, Barry. My win for the week was some time away from home, one-on-one -on -one with my younger brother, traveling around Saskatchewan, safely driving around 1,500 Kims. A lot of Kims. <laughs> <in Saskatchewan. laughs> Just doing circles around her. <laughs> what is <laughs> Kim's Grocery Store, Kim's Corner, yeah, Kim's wasn't corner. it? Yeah, is it Kim's like Corner? We'll say it is. Anyways, gathering up work for the dive crew, booked 18 work days with clients. Great start to 2024. Season 5, Episode 7 was Chaz. Ah, uh, yes. That's because the mayor knows all. Yeah, he knows all. Guys, we're going on three hours. Ah, uh, we're good at this. Uh, we, still got <laughs> we still got so many people here. Uh, Doug, I had, a right. I had a slip and fall at the start of December and had to have a complete left hip replacement. Almost got through the healing process. On January 31st, I had another slip and fall in the same place. Should have learned. This time, I had to have the left femur rebuilt top to bottom. Now my left leg has more titanium than bone. Time to start the recovery process all over again. This will take longer, but I will power it. Power through it with all my energy and smile. You can't, cannot get rid of me that easily. Best uh, wishes to everyone. That, that man is a machine. Yeah. He well, went through last year. And yeah. Hope you heal up soon. <sighs> Sean, my win is I did not attend my place of work this week and hung out with my kids instead. Ice fishing tomorrow. Epic, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Well, and this ain't this the truth. Mr. Cole Clayton wants to add a win. He cannot wait to become a dad who matters because Cole oh, yes. and Allison are having Soon. a baby. Oh, I'm, I'm excited for him, man. Oh, man. It's the best thing ever. Uh, Tamara, my win was watching my 13 year old daughter catch a fish on her first fly she ever tied today. Oh. And I believe it was a squirmy worm. I sure hope it was. <laughs> uh, Mike, Blue Boy. Win was successful first brisket cook for my father-in-law's birthday dinner. Nice. Yeah, he's Love part of the, the family. Part of the smoke tribe. Hey man, once you smoke meat. Love people smoke meat. Yeah, Ooh, Here we go, we'll Dave Rutherford. Stick. Is that you or me? <laughs> me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, my loss for the week is I don't have curtains. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> vulnerable you shared for the first time i gotta be nicer uh we'll put you up twice my win getting out to rocky mountain fly shop meeting colin as well as meeting claude and colleen from morning view mercantile when they came to the store today as well as tying my first fly tonight heck yeah buddy well Whoa. you can quit now because those two flies are going to catch you everything flies. everything clicks amazing proud of you buddy round of clicks for mr dave rutherford from craft beer nation Rock Mountain Fly Shop. My win is seeing the little guy starting to feel a little better after a uh, rough couple of weeks of being pretty sick. My second win this week was um, seeing how many people came together to help. Can't read under that. Can you raise your cursor? Uh, to we? help get, a, <laughs> get, no, our, get, get our truck back. <laughs> get our truck back. It was stolen last week. It was amazing to see how many people helped out and took the time to get the message out and look for it. Um, we thank you, everyone. Yeah, that's community. That's community. Eric, another win. I got to fish yesterday. Only got four fish, but I got got to go fish. Yeah, only four fish. Love so people smoke meat on it. <laughs> <laughs> Except that genre might already be taken. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no. And by taken, I mean <sighs> occupied. Taken Occup aback. Occupado. Well, folks, that's officially the three hour mark three hours we did it we did it Woo, episode who said one. we cannot stream for multiple hours we didn't you did so anyways that's how we do it we share our wins you share your wins we put them on the screen we read them if it takes us five hours we stay for five hours ah uh, no we time just limits. we just make sure that uh everybody's uh wins are heard 
and uh, the sharing part is the cool part. Uh, and as you tune in more and more and more, which will be back next Thursday, you just realize that it's like really fun to share because um, people celebrate your wins. And as Ryan said, it's what's important now. It's not like a positive, victorious thing all the time. It's what's important now. Share with us. Tell us what's going on and uh, let us celebrate that. Even if it's this big, right? Nothing's too small. So, except to roll it up. Until <laughs> the next time. The cool part is last week I had a blender for the final outro. That was actually one of the best ones. Yeah. It was just, a tr- it was like, Mix I just it up. pushed the computer off the desk. <laughs> so, this week I'm pretty sure that I've got something better. And everybody who's been here before is going to get excited, especially Cole, whose song, when he got married this year, Walking down the aisle was simply this. We love you guys. We'll see you next week, see Thursday to be exact, 7 p.m. Mount Sun, maybe 7 to 1. <laughs> Anyways, see you then. That's all we got. Love people catching this shit. All QB. I can feel my body. you cold against the concrete, but I can't seem to get enough. My mind is fixed on what it wants. I just let you beat me. Look can be deceiving. Let you get the best of me. In bed with my worst enemy. This is a no go. I just can take hold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. This is a no go. I just can take hold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. So put your hand in mine. Follow me. Let me waste your time. Set up the do some stupid shit. Take a seat. Let me waste your time. So be top of